if the, some hackers are come and to going to decrypt the information, it will be see the scrambled data. You cannot be get the original data here. For the objectives, I have only three objectives until now. For the first one, to design an encryption scheme in which multi layers of security are inclusive. The second one, to propose the cryptographic operations used to change the original form of data. As I told you before, we can change the text to image to make it protected. And for the hackers, if he decrypt that information, it's not easy for him to get the original data. Uh, for if the text, you can use a number of cryptographic operations and making scrambling data also, it will be protected. That, the third one, they evaluate the proposed algorithm in terms of computation time. For the conclusion here, many previous study review they have the considering the different issue to contribute the data security. And the other one, the research study will focus on the best studies and will be approached to come up with the strong security scheme to be applied on information that is processed by IoT applications. And uh, this is the, our, uh, that my references that I got it start from 2013 until 2019. This is the references area. Okay, okay, thank, thank you. you. Any, Any questions? questions? Yeah. Thank you so much. There's any, any question? question? Your literature review slide. Yeah. Huh? Is it that table? Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. On, On the right, right side there. there. You see, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This reference one. Yeah. yeah this is the, the reference one. The objective of this reference one. This one. Yeah. Right? The proposal is thirteen. Is it? Why thirteen? Number three. Number three. No, 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 no. On the right there, you see the approach. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. That was wrong. In one. One. One thirteen. Yeah. yeah. I'm so sorry for that. It's just like there. Mm hmm. Mm. Okay, okay, so, so what, what is, is your, your plan, plan after this? Okay, okay because, because all the previous study uh, only yeah, talks about the single layer, layer. only single, single layer for protection, protection, protection information via IoT platforms. platforms. That's, That's what I'm going to do. do. I will I make the multi, multi multiple layer. Maybe you can, can use the encryption, encryption. Another, another another new technique of the encryption, encryption because there's a lot of types of the encryption, like using QR codes and What's so on? Maybe I can use a long private key to increase the contribution time of decryption process. Then you can make the generate code. You can can just change uh, change every 24 hours. And this one also for the verification code because you know uh, I'm not going to use the only verification code. Maybe I can use uh, uh, because I will check for the uh, condition of the Parameters I can use uh, like name of person. I can use uh, also for the uh, series of the process key to produce the multiple layer. Now for this for this moment, I'm planning to go for encryption and the verification call also there. Also, that most most important thing I can change the change the the information of the uh, information of the uh, image. To, to make a number of image processing to keep them, keep them safe uh, upon to the IT platforms. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next session will be at 2, so the examiner is not here yet. Uh, I have to call them up because this session ends early, so yeah.
Um, next, I would like to invite Chao Van Tuong for proposal defense. Yeah, good afternoon, um, Professor. Uh, as a seminar um, uh, about my uh, proposal, thank you. Um, first, at all, uh, I, uh, I, I, I would like to thank the um, professor at the seminar in um, Academic uh, Council of Mars and uh, my proposal, my, my supervisor, uh, Dr. Havinda, uh, he um, who is to talk me uh, so much in um, my thesis. And it is my topic uh, of thesis, over investment, a state of driving approach, impact on firm. Um, in my in my in my thesis, there are four um, parts: introduction, overview, a relevant study, research gap, and uh, research method. Uh, about introduction, therefore, um, therefore. Um, Therefore, first, problem statement, research objective, research question, um, research scope, and data, and finally, research structure. Um, about problem statement, uh, in the perfect capital uh, market, um, investment decisions do not rely uh, on financial leverage. 
However, market imperfection in reality make a company uh, suffer um, from uh, agency cost reasons and negative performance. And under a high level of information asymmetry in the capital market without a proper control of internal and external funds, uh, so, so manager will serve uh, um, their, their own benefits, benefits by uh, investing in projects uh, with, with negative uh, NPV. Uh, it uh, means uh, lead, uh, lead to uh, leading uh, to uh, overinvestment. So uh, overinvestment uh, make uh, make uh, shareholder fail to maximize their uh, firm value. Uh, in Vietnam, with a high economic growth rate, companies tend to make more investment to reap um, opportunity to obtain to the obtain market. Moreover, Vietnamese firms with high state ownership uh, rate receive a financial and political support as well as uh, have a weak financial instrument uh, which facilitate them to operate um, inefficiently. So, over-investment uh, may occur in the situation of most Vietnamese firms, especially though uh, in, uh, with high state ownership rate. Uh, SOE uh, it mean, is a state ownership enterprise. SOE tend to have a more agency problem because their owner have no incentive to monitor manager. Therefore, they are different in performance between SOE and POE due to agency problem. Um, therefore, agency problem uh, thus the cause of overinvestment may be driven by state ownership. Um, based on uh, based on um, research statement, um, I, ha I have a four research uh, objective. Uh, first, examine the determinant of investment in Vietnamese company. Second, investigate the impact of overinvestment on firm performance. Third, recover to the moderate, moderating effect uh, of state ownership on overinvestment. And finally, and fi finally, uh, provide some implication of uh, for both corporate and uh, national policy. And um, with four, four, four objectives, research objectives uh, will be uh, compatible with um, four research questions. Uh, firstly, which de determine corporate investment in Vietnamese list company? Secondly, is overinvestment negative related to firm performance? Thirdly, uh, does state ownership restrain or stimulate overinvestment? And finally, at which level can state ownership maximize its restraining effect or minimize its stimulating effect? And this is scope data. Um, I, 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 use, I use a sample of non-financial company list in um, Vietnamese, Vietnam stock market, uh, stock exchange market from 2008, uh, from 2008 to uh, 2018. Because, uh, um, because of the year of um, 2007, Metro is not taken into consideration because of limited, uh, limited data uh, on the list company. And about the data, uh, I, use, I, I could use all the data he collected from uh, Thomson Reuters, uh, he can a source for financial report of uh, on the list company. Um, about research structure, there are five chapters, uh, introduction, overview of relevant study, research methods, research reason, and uh, chapter five, conclusion and implication. Uh, about overview of relevant, um, there, are, the, there are two uh, relevant theory and empirical study. Um, I, 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 I use, uh, I based on um, um, relevant theory about um, about, by, uh, about uh, investment and uh, performance of enterprise. And empirical study, um, I, will, I will develop a determine of corporate investment and relationship between investment and performance. And uh, their table uh, summarized on the relevant theory um, and I use in, um, in my thesis. Uh, this, um, this theory um, concerns um, investment and um, performance. 
and there um, there are some main uh, and there are the empirical review um, I use uh, at I use I use them as a main variable uh, for example financial leverage corporate government governance um, financial constraint and um, macroeconomic factor. Uh, empirical uh, study, investment, investment and firm performance. A uh, firm with high performance and ground rates tend to uh, make more investment in late periods. And, uh, and then to get more investment return. Moreover, on to the expansion uh, period have a negative impact uh, on uh, profitability, um, but have good sale and labor, uh, labor in, in enterprise. Uh, in the short term, a peer in the investment will, will be followed by a reduction in productivity. Therefore, firms will make more investment even um, then when uh, their capital expenditures does not bring any benefit. And two main investment type, uh, the tip uh, are capacity, uh, capacity upgrade uh, and technology upgrade. Uh, why cap capacity upgrade have increased the productivity in the peer investment year? Technology upgrade have a long-term impact. The, the positive relationship relationship between investment and cash flow on firm uh, with low uh, growth opportunity uh, shows the signal of over investment. And uh, I have um, I have a some research gap. Uh, emerging country emerging country including Vietnam, the government holds uh, much control of business. Activity through its large ownership uh, greater in the ownership structure. Uh, second, overinvestment is supposed to come uh, from uh, asymmetry information uh, and agency problem. Moreover, a state ownership is through uh, exacerbate agency conflict uh, between manager and shareholder because because the business has not been fueled by previous study. Uh, and here is yes, conceptual, conceptual framework. Uh, framework. Um, uh, but total, total investment, there are three categories: uh, categories, uh, category, uh, over investment, normal investment, and older uh, over investment. Uh, we is extra uh, over investment uh, because it, um, in my thesis, uh, I will, I will, I focus on uh, over investment. Uh, that's main impact. Um, Impact on the firm uh, performance, um, and um, and uh, and SOE rate uh, it um, it uh, another uh, main impact um, uh, as moder moderating uh, moderating effect on firm performance. Um, for uh, research method. Uh, I apply, I, I do apply the uh, econometry model, two uh, econometry model, the overinvestment estimation model and main econometry, econometry model. And uh, with uh, two, I, I will apply the um, estimation technique, uh, statistic approach and a dynamic approach. Uh, and here's overinvestment, uh, overinvestment, uh, overinvestment estimation model. Um, there are um, investment rate and investment rate, um, cap flow, uh, Tobin Q, uh, capital intensive, uh, firm size, revenue ground, business rate, uh, leverage, and uh, mispricing. pricing. Um, the estimation uh, equation is generalized from a previous study. And in, uh, in addition, uh, this regulatory uh, approval in this represent for mispricing uh, term uh, is also taken into consideration um, in the in the main uh, in the main uh, cost. Uh, yeah, uh, for over, over investment uh, estimation model. Uh, um, I will I, I use um, the uh, the error error sum of equation uh, I compute in order to generate the, uh, some uh, very variable representing for over investment and um, 
and uh, residual, um, residual um, minutes to harm uh, variation uh, standard deviation. Uh, yep, uh, yep, yep, uh, yes, um, a superior, superior zero uh, is an uh, positive uh, is a signal of uh, open investment in enterprise. Uh, and uh, that's the main model. Uh, there are four, uh, there are four, um, four, four equations uh, with the difference of uh, the level of uh, impact of SOE. SOE says so the level of impact of SOE. Uh, for estimation technique, I, 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 I will apply static approach um, with the four. A pool ordinary least square, a fixed effect model, and a random effect model. And a dynamic approach, uh, I will apply system generalized method moment. And, um, and this, part, this part, I will apply this part in the chapter four. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Okay, um, how do I address you? Yeah, my name is Chow Bang Tung. My name is Chow Bang Tung. I call you by? Yeah. Chow. 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 Chow Bang Tung. Chow Bang Tung. Yes. Chow Bang Tung. Okay. Congratulations. You have already come to the point where you have already prepared three chapters, yeah? And you are doing the proposal defense. So, so I'm making, making my comment based on, on the three, three chapters chapter that you submitted to me, eh? because your presentation is of course quite brief. brief. Uh, make, make my comment, comment on your thesis that you have, you have gone, gone through, through not one time, time three, three times, times already. already eh? okay, okay, number, number one, one uh, uh, title. title. Yeah. yeah. Title. Can you show your, your title? title? Yeah. Again. Research title. Yeah, title. Yes. Okay, now uh, what, what you presented, presented is slightly different from uh, your thesis. Probably, probably you made some changes. changes. Uh, the one that I have is over investment and a state driven approach impact on firms. Okay. Okay, now. Um, Reading the title, the I'm trying, trying to understand, understand actually what exactly that you want to research. research. All right. Now, you, you have, have over investment, investment and, and then, then you have a state driven approach as a variable, and, and then you have the firm. firm. So, so there are three variables here. here. All right. Now, now I'm, I'm trying, trying to understand, understand what actually you're trying, trying to establish. establish. Yeah. Uh, are you trying to establish the relationship? Between uh, over investment as the variable with the firm, or okay, you you mentioned also a state driven approach impact on the firm. So I'm not very very uh, very clear actually what why you're trying to yeah to 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 reach it now. I'm looking uh, if I were you. Uh, number, uh, number one, one you, you if you want, want to establish the relationship, relationship then probably, probably you state, uh, for example, uh, over investment relationship with your uh, dependent variable. Yeah, yeah I, I imagine, imagine here your dependent variable is actually the firm. And, and in fact, the firm also you are not clear. clear. What, what actually you want to measure from the, on the firm as a dependent variable? Okay, now in in your conceptual framework, you actually indicate that variable as the uh, firm performance. So much so you state in your title clearly so that now I understand what you're trying to do is do you, you want to establish the relationship between the overinvestment variable with the uh, firm performance? Because firm is very, 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 very vague, it's very big area. So you, you need, need to, to uh, more be uh, be specific. Yeah, yeah what, what you are you're trying, trying to assess is really the firm performance, and you need to to define what is firm performance in your 
operational definition yeah looking at your tc that you made you didn't you didn't have a section on operational definition it's very important that you define in the operational definition what you mean by firm performance yeah because to different people it means different thing yeah for your listeners this is what you mean by firm uh, if, uh firm performance similarly all these variable that you're going to use in the research over investment state driven where you need to properly define so that you know, anybody read your tc they understand what you mean okay because they may have a different understanding okay so first stick clearly if you want to to establish a relationship then you stage yeah what you want to be exactly over investment relationship yeah uh, with the firm performance you mentioned something about soe isn't it why is it soe state uh you define as soe uh, SOE. 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 Uh, SOE, the state owner enterprise. A state of state ownership. Ownership in the yeah, yeah. That's the variable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. that's why you mentioned state uh, ownership enterprise as the moderator. I think yeah. that's what you want to, to study, isn't it? Yeah. You want to use that as a moderating variable to the relationship between over investment and the firm performance. Yeah. Um, because because uh, SOE is an enterprise, enterprise, it's a big enterprise, enterprise in the enterprise, capital market. Okay. Yeah, so the government, government enterprise, enterprise. Yeah, and you, you want, want to study how, how they influence the relationship between your investment, investment yeah. and, and the, the firm performance. Yeah, every, so the, um, the agency cost between the financial behavior, the yes. investment behavior in the uh, SOE. Okay. Yes, so it's the ownership enterprise. All right. So you need to rewrite the title uh, so that. You know, yeah. I'm clear when I read that. Yeah, yeah. That state clear clearly what are the drivers, uh, what are the variables, uh, the independent variables is your investment, yeah. and then the firm performance is your dependent variable, and you're going to use the the state the ownership uh, enterprise as your moderating variable. Mention it in the title. Yeah. Okay, that's number one. Okay, number two, your pitch numbering. This is the first time. Yeah. Uh, normally, we don't do page numbering on top of the page. Your thesis? Yeah. You put the page paging. Page one, two, three, up to whatever. Normally, we put at the bottom of the page. You realize that? I know. I don't understand. Your thesis. Yeah. Your paging is on top of the page. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Should be at the bottom center. Yeah. Okay. Bottom. Center, yeah, just correct that. Number placed on the bottom of the part. Ah, yeah. Okay. okay. Now, now table, table of content. content. You, you need, need to rewrite the table of content. content yeah. Redo and make sure um, do it properly. Yeah. The format and all that. Um, for instance, uh, let me see some of. Uh, Comment on your uh, table of content. Eh? Model, I will develop um, in detail in the chapter four. Coming in? Yeah. Economy model, economy stream model. Yes, I will develop. No, no, I'm talking about your table of content now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the formatting is wrong. Yeah? yeah. Um, you need to improve on that. Um, let me see, for example. You have 1.3 delimitation and limitation of studies. And then after that, you have research objective and question. You see, normally delimitation and limitation you do after research objective, not before. Yeah, you go to your introduction, uh, problem statement, and the research objective and question. And then you have research scope and uh, you didn't include the uh, significance of the research or significance of the studies also not in here. That is very important because I want to know what is the, the importance of your research. Yeah, the significance of your research. Signification. Yeah, the significance. Do you know what is significance of the research? Huh? 
Ah, yeah. You mentioned in the slide, but not in the thesis. Yeah, in your table of content, you didn't even mention. Uh, you wrote in in some page of the thesis, but in the table of content, you didn't include. Yeah. Yeah. You need to work on the formatting of the table of content. You can with the Microsoft Word, it actually can can create your table of content automatically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, already, already mentioned, mentioned just now, now chapter, chapter one, one, you need to include your operational definition. Yeah. You, you need, need to include your research, research structure. structure. You wrote your research structure, structure uh, somewhere, somewhere in some, some other page, page. Yeah, yeah, but, but not, not in your table, table of content. content. In page six, you, you mentioned research, research structure, structure, but in your, your table, table of content, content, you don't have. Yeah. And then yeah. significant, yeah, I already yeah, mentioned the significant just now. Okay, okay, now, now your, your research, research background, background, you start off with, with writing on your research background. background. Now, what, what is research, research background? background? Research background is basically you're trying to describe what is the scenario, scenario yeah, yeah, around the subject, subject matter of, of your research. research. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, this is just like introduction, how you are how you going to uh, introduce where, where are you heading in your research before you write your problem statement. statement. It's, it's about, about the scenario, scenario. What's, what's going, going on around. Mm. All right? But, but in your, your case, case, your research, research uh, background, background, you quickly, quickly go into methodology. methodology. Yeah. All right? Okay. For example, when, when I read, I read your research, research background, background, you start off with research, research method. method. All right? Yeah. Research, research method, method in this study are twofold. Qualitative, qualitative and quantitative. quantitative. So you don't, you don't, you don't uh, start your discussion with the methodology. Yeah, yeah methodology. You, you, you talk, talk later. Yeah. You just describe. Yeah. yeah. What, what is the you know, What's going on? on? What, what are the issue that create the interest for you to to conduct your research? Then you go to the problem statement and describe the gap for your research. And that's how the flow of the the research is going to be. Okay, okay, again, again your, your problem, problem statement, statement also, uh, you, you need, need to, to highlight, highlight again the issue, issue yeah, yeah, or, or the, the inquiry to research and highlight the gap. The gap. You, you mentioned, mentioned some, some of the gap, gap. Yeah. just yeah, now. Yeah, 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 you, you need, need to, to uh, yeah, include, include that, that in your, in your problem, problem statement. statement. Yeah. Um, Okay, the, uh, now, yeah, now this is your problem. Look, look at your problem statement. statement. Yes, yeah, so to make sure you describe, describe the issue properly and then uh, uh, highlight what are the gap. gap. Yeah, that is uh, missing in the previous uh, literatures and yeah, that you want to 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 conduct the research. Okay, um, research objective. And question, question, which is page, page four, yeah, page, page four, four here. here. Okay, okay normally, normally how, how you write, write research, research objectives is that you start, start off the overall aim of your research, research. all right, which, which is very, very much uh, linked, linked to the, the title, title of your research, research. yeah, then. then you list down what are the specific objectives yeah, of the research in order to meet the overall aim of the research. And then uh, you need to be more specific. For example, here, uh, go to your uh, research objective. Okay, you say examine first one, uh, research, uh, research objective. Okay. Examine the determinants of investment in Vietnamese company, which is slightly different here. Yeah? The one that I have here, you say, examine the determinant of corporate investment. All right? Okay, so when you say determinant, so there can be many determinants, isn't it? Yeah, many determinants of investment. So probably you want to specify. Yeah, what, what are, are some, some of the determinants? Otherwise, otherwise it's, it's never ending. There's so many determinants. So you need to scope so that people are aware. What, what, what are they? Uh, the, uh, the, the kind, kind of determinant or the legal determinant they are interested, interested to investigate. investigate. Okay. okay. 
again you mentioned about investigate the impact of over investment yeah yeah so impact is also very very big very big you know so what kind of impact you want to uh investigate here so because your research objective has to be specific so that you're clearly you know where you're going to focus on the on your work otherwise you know if you're so big you know you may lose direction Okay, so, so look at, at again your research objective, objective and your research, research question. question. Yeah, so, so it need to be properly written. Okay, okay. Um, uh, uh, for whatever, whatever reason, reason, I do not see you have hypothesis. I think. Do I have hypothesis in your uh, uh, table, table of content? Of, content, of course, you didn't mention about hypothesis. Let me see. Do you have hypothesis? Hypothesis. Uh, no, 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 no. It's because in, uh, in finance, I get econometry uh, in um, secondary data, and um, and and and, uh, and I apply the economy econ econometry model. Uh, it's not like uh, in management. Okay, it's okay. Yeah. So okay, uh, if you have hypothesis, you need to discuss on the how. The, the, the development, development process, process of the various hypotheses. Yeah, I yeah, can't remember, I remember whether you have hypothesis yeah, or not. But uh, uh, definitely, definitely, the discussion, discussion on hypothesis development is not there. Yeah. Uh, and, and also, also your uh, conceptual, conceptual framework, framework uh, which, which is basically uh, on page 63. Of course, course you mentioned you can you go to your um, conceptual framework. framework. Mm. Uh, frame. Come framework. Ah, framework. 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 Can check your framework. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now the thesis that you submitted. Yeah. Uh, you start with methodology background, and then after that you go into conceptual framework. Now, now, to, to come, come out with the conceptual, conceptual framework, there, there must be a proper discussion. discussion. How, How you can you start, start with the theory? theory. All right. right. Normally, Normally, you, you go, go to theories and you go to theoretical framework, framework, then the conceptual, conceptual framework, framework, so that we can understand, understand what is the flow, how, how you develop, develop this. Mm. All right. Uh, now, now, here, here you, you wrote, wrote SOE rate. I don't understand. Why is it SOE rate? Uh, why, why you use rate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. SOE rate uh, because uh, uh, in, uh, it depends on uh, the, 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 the level of uh, state of uh, state company in the capital market in Vietnam. Um, uh, their uh, rate um, uh, is level of capital uh, invested in, uh, in, 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 um, in, in company. Uh, in this company, uh, for example, and the main in in the main model, yeah, uh, there are four equations, and it's different uh, about um, level of uh, investment of SOE of a zero or to twenty percent, twenty five percent. And twenty-five percent, fifty percent, and fifty uh, percent to seventy-five uh, percent, and uh, now if seventy-five percent uh, to uh, one hundred. Okay, all right. So you are actually looking at as the rate as the variable. That's why I'm saying, yeah, not the enterprise. Yeah. No uh, enterprise. This uh, company uh, in in market, but uh, it's the state company. Uh, uh, no, no. It, uh, uh, in the list company, company first, um, um, their uh, their uh, interaction uh, interaction of um, the roles of state in the company. Okay, I leave it to you. Yeah, so you need to be clear. Yeah, my early understanding is that you want to uh, examine how the state uh, ownership enterprise influence. Yeah. The relationship between our investment and the firm performance. Yeah. So as a Weak as, as entity, mm -hmm. yeah. But, but in your, your conceptual promo, you, you mentioned as rate. That's why I'm asking you. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. So, so you need if you, you uh, look at, at the SOE rate as the variable, 
then then, then you, you need, need to reflect, reflect that in your, your title. title. Yeah. I say because yeah. my and the title I say uh, the way I see that yeah, it reflect more on the the state ownership enterprise role as a possible moderating variable for your research. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, what about your uh, research instrument? No discussion on uh, what instrument you're going to do your research. Uh, instrument. Um, you know what is research instrument? Yeah. For example, you want to develop your questionnaire for survey. Uh, no, uh, secondary secondary data. And I will. Um, oh, you're going to collect. Data. You're going to collect all your data will be secondary data, which is provided by the company there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, data, data collection, collection. Uh, very uh, brief, brief. Uh, you, you describe your data, data collection, you didn't, didn't even discuss on uh, your sampling size, size. Yeah. Uh, selection, selection of sample, sample and unit analysis uh, in your thesis. Yeah, just the we need to add of sample of uh, 600 capital. Okay, yeah. 600 yeah, yeah. not in your, your yeah. thesis, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, okay, so you, you're, you're not, not going, going to have a questionnaire because you say you're going to use Secondary data, yeah? Yeah. Okay, okay. that's uh, from, from me. me. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. I thank you. Thank you very much. Too many questions. <laughs> thank you okay, very much. Okay, actually, the time is over. I must stop the questions that I had also before Kamal asking. And just only a few points. First of all, the formatting is not following university's formatting, as Dr. Kamal said. You need to follow formatting. Uh, numbering, numbering in chapter, chapter two for the titles and subtitles, the numbering and the subsequent subtitles not numbering is not clear. Mm. Chapter two should be uh, finished with a summary, not conclusion. You cannot bring the conclusion in chapter two. Conclusion is chapter five. Uh, all the references that you are using mostly is very, very old references. Just only look, uh, go back to your first slide. I just only have a one. First slide. Go back to your first slide. First slide one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here. Yeah. No. no. Next, next. 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 Yeah. Okay. okay. Just only the first sentence. What you written? In a perfect capital market, investment decisions don't reply the financial leverage. This reference is 1958. Okay. Around uh, seven, six years ago. All right. Okay. Then, uh, is it possible that we can say that uh, still the situation is same as situation in 1958? Because many things is changing in the market. How you want to say the current situation is following the old time, old and long time ago, right? Uh, like 1958. Okay. Your references mostly is very old and not trustable. Okay. Because of that, you need to bring much more recent references in your work. Okay. The rest is uh, approximately the same as uh, Dr. Kamal said, and you need to collect your corrections, do your correction, then after that we can say that you passed the proposal defense or not. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite Tuan Shuan Duan.
Uh, good afternoon, uh, professors in the council. Uh, special thank you to uh, Professor Adnan and Dr. Sadi for being my examiners today. And also thank you very much, Dr. Kyra, for being my uh, supervisor for the last two years. Uh, you've been helping me a lot. Uh, my name is Tuan Duan. Uh, I come from Vietnam. I work in the higher education business uh, in the same field. And uh, <clears throat> I am uh, the founder of one of the uh, private universities in Vietnam. And recently, I, uh, when I came to Malaysia, I started my PhD here at uh, MUST. Uh, I invited Professor uh, Prem Kumar to come to my university just last month. And we signed a, uh, an MOU, uh, hoping to uh, partnership uh, to partner with uh, MUST in uh, research and uh, 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 educational training programs. My my thesis uh, proposal defense today. I'll be talking about the impact of entrepreneurial education on students' entrepreneurial intention. Uh, I'll, I'll be covering three chapters. Uh, one introduction literature review, and uh, methodology. Uh, in Vietnam, entrepreneurship is a very interesting field with uh, the government's goal of at least four million enterprises from the, fi the five year period of 2016 to 2020. Uh, 20. And according to the government's, government's magazine, the percentage of enterprise on Vietnam population based on the population is very low. It's about a half a percentage. Uh, compared to those in America, Taiwan, countries like Thailand, Israel, and Japan, the rate is uh, over 2%. So in order to achieve the average rate in the world, it is required to for Vietnam to uh, establish over 4 million enterprises. And, and the number of enterprises, enterprises in Vietnam, Vietnam only satisfy only a quarter of that, a four, uh, one fourth of the average rate. So, so therefore, the increase in the number of entre entrepreneurs is always a major concern of the government. Of the, government. Um, the main goal of this research is to study the impact of entrepreneurial education on entrepreneurial intention. I'll be testing the relationship between entrepreneurial education and entrepreneurial intention. Uh, I will also be testing the moderate role of length of time and team cooperation in the relationship between entrepreneurial education and entrepreneurial intention. I will be also testing the mediating role of passion and self-efficacy in the relationship of entrepreneurial education and intention. Uh, the, uh, the significance, significance of, of the study, study is to have a statistically significant uh, relationship between entrepreneurial education and entrepreneurial intention. Uh, the moderate role of, of TAM and team cooperation in the relationship between entrepreneurial education and entrepreneurial intention is statistically significant. The mediating role of passion and self-efficacy in the relationship of entrepreneurial uh, education and entrepreneurial intention statistically significant. Uh, for literature review, the concept of entrepreneurship is portrayed as the way toward creating something new with value by allocating vital time, exertion, and getting, and getting the benefits, benefits of monetary, monetary and personal, personal fulfillment. The concept of entrepreneurship education is described as the scope of lectures, circular, um, curricular, and programs that attempt to provide students with the necessary entrepreneurial competencies, knowledge, uh, skills geared towards the pursuit of a career in entrepreneurship. The concept of entrepreneurial intention is defined as the willingness of an individual to express entrepreneurial behavior and engage in entrepreneurial activities associated with self-employment initiatives and new business startup. Um, in my thesis, I'll be looking at theories and models 
Uh, one of the theories is the theory of planned behavior. The theory of planned behavior was derived from the theory of reasoned action, postulated by Asin and Fisman. Perceived behavioral control was employed to predict human behaviors that are not completely under voluntary control. Um, the theory of reasoned action was able to predict behavior based on intentions with the assumption that all behaviors are voluntary and under control. And based on that theory of planned behavior, uh, Slagel and Cunnan formulated this model of mixed entrepreneurial intentions, which shows perceived desirability and perceived feasibility has a positive relationship with entrepreneurial intentions. And uh, Matheson and Anders stated the very mindset that sees entrepreneurial opportunities will distinguish potential entrepreneurs and others. Entrepreneurial opportunity mindsets are significantly important because opportunities do not spontaneously appear. Entrepreneur Entrepreneurial decisions usually start from the faith of which they realize a business opportunity that has potential profit. This comes to my research framework. Uh, this framework may look a little different from my other peer scholars. Uh, this is based on the uh, structural uh, equation model. My entrepreneurial education is used as an independent variable and I have dependent variable here as entrepreneurial intention. In the middle, I have two mediating variables, uh, entrepreneurial passion and entrepreneurial self-efficacy. And then I also have two moderating variable, team cooperation and length of time. Um, this is my hypothesis framework. Uh, hypothesis one, entrepreneur, entrepreneurial education has positive effect on entrepreneurial intention. Hypothesis two, entrepreneurial education has positive impact on entrepreneurial passion. And hypothesis three, entrepreneurial education has positive effect on entrepreneurial self-efficacy. Same over as uh, hypothesis four, entrepreneurial passion has positive impact, uh, uh, effect on entrepreneurial intention. Hypothesis five, entrepreneurial self-efficacy has positive effect on entrepreneurial intention. And team cooperation moderates the relationship between entrepreneurial education and entrepreneurial intention through entrepreneurial passion and self-efficacy, such that this relationship is strong when there's high team uh, when there's a high team cooperation. And the length of time also on hypothesis seven, the length of time moderates the relationship of entrepreneurial education and entrepreneurial intention through passion and self-efficacy, such that the relationship is uh, strong when the length of time is, is long, is high. So the next two slides are my, uh, my hypothesis, which I just explained. Research methodology. The method is, uh, I'll be using is qualitative and quantitative. Instrument, I'll be using Smart PLS 3.2.7 software, and uh, the technique is PLS SEM. Uh, qualitative research process will be divided into three phases. Phase one is as outlined uh, above. Phase two is preliminary research. And the last phase is formal research. Quantitative research process. The formal quantitative research is conducted on the basis of direct survey performed by the final year student who have had intention to take startup action at universities in the provinces and cities in the north of Vietnam. Survey unit will be final year full-time students and the method, investigation method is direct interviews through 
uh, questionnaires and sample size, uh, I'm looking at uh, 500. Uh, with that, I conclude my uh, uh, presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you for presentation. Uh, I have some questions. Uh, Regarding the, first of all, regarding the arrangement of uh, headings for chapter one, you know that we put reasons, uh, research, reasons, research, uh, purpose of research. So you should follow the standard format, like significance of the study. First, you need to write about problem statement. And here there is not any problem statement, which is very, very important part of chapter one. So you should write problem statement and highlight the gap and uh, you, you should justify, justify why you want to do this research. research. After that, um, uh, your, your objectives, uh, research objectives. objectives. The, the way that you arrange your research objective, objective also, you need to improve. You mentioned to verify a relationship. Again, you mentioned to verify moderate role. To verify moderate role. You know that you repeat a lot. So yeah, it's, it's better, better you follow the Bloom taxonomy. taxonomy. Bloom taxonomy, they introduce a suitable ad adjective, uh, sorry, verb, for uh, arranging your uh, research objectives. Okay, for example, to assess, to analyze, uh, to determine. So these things are very important. And significance of the study. Also here, I don't find the significance of the study. So uh, you should follow. Because, because we, don't we don't write, write research, research design, design, research methodology. methodology. We don't have these two in chapter one. one. Okay? okay, so, so you, you need to rearrange. Okay, so uh, the framework you just show to you as a main research framework. Okay, so you have two green color, uh, like. Uh, Interpreneurial patient and uh, interpreneurial uh, self-efficacy, right? So what about the connection between two, two moderators here? You put here in the green color. This? Yes. Green, these two? No, no, no. The two boxes. Here? Yes. There is not any arrow to show the connection between these two. Connection between those two? Yeah. Um, I am, I am thinking, thinking they, they just, uh, they, um, they have a relationship, relationship with not, not these, these two together, together but, but affecting, affecting the, um, the DB so and not. You, okay, so what about the role of these two? Uh, interpreneurial patient and also self-efficacy. So if they exist here yeah. as a moderator, right? Right. right. They are the moderator. They are mediator. 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 This is to mediator. mediator. Moderating is, uh, is team four person in town. So there is not any hypothesis for this to medi mediator? Yes, there are. So the Because you know that it's a little bit confusing, uh, the way that you present. Okay. Yeah, yeah. if, um, you know that a research uh, framework, uh, no need to be very complicated. Okay. Okay. Because, uh, the way that you arrange, I don't uh, understand which of them is mediator, which of them is moderator, what is the correlation between these uh, variables. Okay. These are mediating, mediating variables, and my hypothesis for uh, the mediating variables is that uh, this one, uh, either passion or self-efficacy, will have a positive effect on the intention. So, why do you choose two mediator variables? Uh, why do I choose, yes. choose two? Because in the case, how you can measure the, the effectiveness of uh, uh, these two uh, mediator variables, the relationship. How you can measure, how you can make sure that these two have the same, uh, for example, value or the same effect, how you can make sure. Is there any way to measure, or do you think about that? Um, that's why, if you can, if it's possible for you, just make it easier. Okay, I'll, I'll yeah, make it's it It's a little bit complicated okay, sure. about the two mediator. Yeah. 
I was just thinking that, you know, the, the higher passion a person has, then it can kind of mediate yeah, uh, the, uh, the DB. But then I'll, I'll, I'll make it clear in, in the yeah. thesis. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, for your methodology, um, qualitative technique is your main technique or quantitative? Um, qualitative. Qualitative. Yes. Uh, but, but the way that, that you write, write uh, like, like design, design for, for qualitative, qualitative research. research, you mentioned the result of qualitative research, research is a foundation for quantitative research. research. The, way the way that you write, that you write it means that, that your qualitative, qualitative is a supplement for quantitative research. research. So, okay, so, so when you mentioned, the, the, uh, I mean, is a foundation of quantitative, of quantitative. Okay. So, so I don't know the order. So please highlight. Sure. The importance of qualitative or quantitative. So quantitative is the first um, an important part of your research or qualitative. It's yeah. I, I think I misunderstood your question. Maybe what I'm trying to say here is the my qualitative research the main goes research. before go, goes before the quantitative. Uh, okay. Prior, yes. As a primary research, first you do qualitative. Yes. After that, you will conduct quantitative. Exactly. Yes. Uh, how many interviewees are you going to choose? Uh, uh, I said, I said uh, 500. 500. 500 for qualitative? Oh, qualitative. Uh, qualitative. qualitative. You know that the numbers that you are going to choose for qualitative studies and also for quantitative studies is very important. You should have the reason and justification. Right. For example, for quantitative, you cannot easily choose 500. You should have, uh, you know, that total population or the follow some uh, calculation based on formula. And for qualitative also, you need uh, to have at least five respondents. Uh, okay. So, but for the number that you are going to choose, please make sure that you choose as uh, accurate Thank you very much. Number. I think you got those two uh, kind of confused, mixed up. Also, there are another comment, sorry, for, because this is just for helping you to improve your work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you are going to conduct chi-square for qualitative research, for interview. Can you but what kind of technique you want to use for analysis of uh, qualitative uh, data? Can you repeat the question, please? Okay. For example, you want to conduct qualitative, right? right. Quantitative, uh, qualitative uh, technique. Yes. And then you want to conduct interview. Okay. Right. What, is what is the, the technique, technique for analysis of uh, interviews uh, data, data, that the data, data, data that, that you collect by interview? The technique for conducting the interviews? No. For example, you collect the data right. via, via interview, interview right? right? Right. So, so after that, that, how you are going to analyze yes. this data? How you are going to analyze this data? Um, um, using software? No. Actually, the way that you are going to uh, analyze qualitative uh, data is totally different with quantitative data. Oh, okay. Here you don't mention. I did not. Okay. So I'll, I'll For example, for interview, uh, the data that collected by interview, we use thematic analysis. But you mentioned here chi-square. Chi-square, I don't think that we can use it for quantitative, qualitative data. Okay. okay. I'll, so I'll make note of that. Yeah, make sure that you choose a suitable uh, technique for analysis. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you very, very much, much, Dr. Shadi. <coughs> okay. Uh, I think Dr. Sh uh, Sh Shadi. 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 He just now uh, has raised very important fundamental. Uh, things that you have uh, overlooked, you know, for example, you have to make the problem statement, yes. the gaps, and the research questions and objectives very clear. Yes. But anyway, I just want to add, I just want to see, for example, uh, your slide, you know, on significance of the, the work, slide number two or something like that. Okay. So, so what you're saying that um, has a statistically significant relationship between entrepreneurial education and entrepreneurial intention, and I think uh, uh, that is uh, presumably going to be supported by your test of uh, the various hypotheses, right, that you yes. have formulated, and most of these are. Uh, Hypothesis basically you're talking about positive effect. Yeah, the positive effect of the entrepreneurial, for example, of hypothesis number one, uh, entrepreneurial education which has positive effect on many positive, positive, right? 
what if uh, what does your intuition say is it going to be supported or not supported when you do uh, the actual uh, data collection and analysis later on uh, intuition mm -hmm. Well, well, I I would, I would like, like to, to, to keep, keep it uh, uh, neutral and not to... Uh, what if, for example, that the result is uh, on the reverse? Uh, the opposite uh, of... The opposite, uh, yeah. It has a negative effect. So what does it mean in terms of the significance of the study? Oh, it, I, I, I believe it's still a significant because... Um, uh, uh, the, research the research itself is, is going, going to be, uh, hopefully, hopefully, is going to be used and, and, and published. Uh, so the, the, the young, young, uh, the, the young the students, um, they, uh, they can use it. So, so maybe uh, if, if one, one is tested, tested otherwise, otherwise then, then, then they, they know, know to avoid or, or I guess, uh, you know, you know however, however it comes out on, on, on the results, result, it still be a good uh, indication for, for, for the students. Student. Who, who will be the, the main users of these uh, results? The, the students? Country. Yes. yes. Students? Students, and then who else? Uh, well, well, I guess, I guess uh, the, the audience, audience, the, the the audience is large. It can, it can be uh, parents, parents of students. students. It can, can be for educators also. also. Even uh, for uh, government, government legislator, legislator, legislators. legislators. Okay. Okay, that's all for me. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I just, just want, want to complete Dr. Shadi's question. question. Uh, you, uh, you said, said that you have, have a mediator. mediator. Next, Next slide. slide. Can you show me which hypothesis showing your mediator? You have H1, H2, 2, H7. I'm asking which hypothesis showing show your mediator? Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a two green bars as a mediator, am I right? Right. Okay. But the hypothesis H2, the entrepreneurial education is the independent variable and the entrepreneurial patient is the dependent variable. In this hypothesis, it's not mediated because it's just on the connection between two bars. Whenever you say mediator means that you want to see the effect of that, for example, entrepreneurial patient on the relation between the education and intention. So you are saying... Previous one. Like from, from here, here to here? here? No, 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 no connection. Okay. okay. First, First of all, you evaluating H1. Right. right. Okay. okay. Then, then you want to see what is the effect of the interpernial patient on this relationship. Okay. okay. Because of that, your H2 should be the connection between the education, patient, and intention. Then the patient will be in this between mediator. Okay, okay, you, do you cannot, cannot have, have H2 and H4. H4. In, In this way, way you just only have one independent, one independent variable, one dependent variable, variable no, no mediator, mediator at all. This is one problem. problem. Okay. okay. And, and another, another one, one H6, H6, H7. H7. How, How come, come one variable can have an effect on three different relationships? Relationship. You see, from, from one, one variable, variable, you have a three arrows. arrows. Okay. okay. Then, then it means that, that this is moderator for how many variables? Um, for example, if you just have a middle line, okay, means that the team cooperation be affected on the relation between education and intention, that's one right, okay? But you have one arrow to showing the H2, H3, and H1. One moderator, how come one moderator can affect on three different uh, variables? Well, at, at first, I, I understand. At first, I was going to just put this team cooperation moderating this. Just only that, not only not anything else. Okay. Okay. 
Then also, also you, you need, need to see that this is before, before your mediator or after me. You call it as a mediator. It means that it's in, in between of your independent and dependent variables. Okay, so the okay. positions of it, it okay. Okay, then all your hypotheses will be changed. Okay, uh, all right. In this way, right now, these two variables, patient and self-efficiency, they are not mediator. They just only, they are some dependent variable. Okay. Dependent and in the next level, it's, uh, they are independent again. Okay. Because you have one hypothesis, H2, another H4. Down, you have H3, another H5. Okay. okay. But whenever you call it as a mediator, you need to have a one hypothesis, including three parameters. Independent, mediator, and dependent. Okay? Yeah. Thank you very much. And also about the qualitative and quantitative. Okay. You mentioned that your work is a qualitative or quantitative? Both. Oh, both of them. Okay. Then uh, for the qualitative part, you said that you are using software to analyze. No, that's, that's quantitative. How you analyze the qualitative part? Qualitative. Um, there, I, it's in, I, yeah, I, I didn't put it in here. Uh, is the software means that those? Yeah, Dr. Sari was. Sari was hmm. You need to mention that one out, okay? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. You're going to have a 15-minute break, so the next session starts at 3.15. Thank you.
uh, attention for tomorrow uh, i have an announcement for tomorrow workshop with dr shahin at three o'clock everyone has to bring their own laptop and also install the software that is provided in the ips whatsapp group okay and you also need to register with me so after today's end please uh, see me right, thank you All right, uh, we can start now. Can I please welcome Gojia? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my great pleasure to stand here to present my report to all of you. My name is Guoja and my supervisor is Dr. Shetty. And today I will introduce my uh, visit to you. The topic is the impact of dominant predictors on university students' creativity in Shanxi, China, the moderating role of motivation. And first of all, uh, uh, I will introduce the main clue of it. There are three chapters in my visit here. Uh, the, uh, the first, first chapter, chapter is about introduction part, and uh, chapter, chapter two, two literature, literature review. review. Chapter, chapter three, three methodology. methodology. And, and first, first of all, I want to introduce the background of the study. Uh, the, main the main message of Global, global innovation, innovation Index 2018, 2018 energizing the world with innovation can be summarized in seven key findings, which can show the global development status of the creativity. The first one, becoming optimistic about global innovation and growth is possible. Uh, secondly, continued investment in breakthrough energy. Innovations are essential for global growth and to avert an uh, environmental crisis. And thirdly, China's rapid rise shows the way for the other middle income economies. Uh, number four, well, richer economies with more diverse industries and export portfolios are likely to score high in innovation. And the fifth one, uh, focusing on translating innovation investment into results is key. Uh, sixth, strong regional innovation imbalances preserve hampering economic and human development. And seventh, most uh, top science and technology clusters in the U.S., China, and Germany. Uh, Brazil, India, and Iran also makes the top 100 list. So from this table, we can see that uh, more and more countries are pay, uh, attention to, uh, paying attention to the development of uh, creativity. And uh, then let's look at the development status of creativity in China. According to National Innovation Index Report 2016 to 2017, published by China Academy of Science and Technology Development Strategy, uh, we can know that the pattern of global innovation led by the U.S., Japan, and Europe is basically stable. And uh, the innovation index of developing countries lagged behind and made a slow progress. But China's innovation index ranks 17th in 2017, up one place from the year 2016. Uh, China's investment in innovation resources continue to increase. Uh, compared with the U.S., Japan, and South Korea, China's innovation index score is still relatively low, but the gap is narrowing. So with continuous input of innovation resources and the deepening of the reform of science and technology system and mechanism, China's innovation efficiency will be further improved and uh, the comprehensive ranking of national innovation capacity will steadily advance to the ranks of innovation-oriented countries. So from the two tables here, we can see that China has made great significant progress in the development of creativity and will do more in the future. Okay. And then here, with promulgation and implementation of the outline of the national program for long and medium term scientific and technological development, uh, China's scientific and technological innovation capacity has greatly improved. 
The contribution rate of scientific and technological progress has steadily increased and has reached 55.3%. Uh, research and the development, development intensity of the expenditure input has reached 2.06%. So the gap with the innovative countries has been further narrowed. Uh, knowledge intensive industries have maintained a good monument of the development. Technological innovation capacity has greatly improved. So these are the development status of creative in China. And here, I will narrow the scope to talk about the importance of study in university students' creativity. There are three points from different aspects. The first one, it is of obvious importance to society that college creative talent be identified, developed, and utilized. It is becoming increasingly clear that nothing can contribute more to mental health and the general welfare of our nation and to the satisfaction of its people and the general raising of the level of creativity. And secondly, it is of importance to study creativity for university students' vocational success. Uh, An acceptance of the broader concepts of the human mind opens up many new, many new and uh, tremendously exciting possibilities for university students. It places a new emphasis on consideration of what they could achieve in their career. I think that may be a very important factor. And thirdly, as we have begun to understand more deeply the creative function of the mind, the keys for learning creatively rather than just authority has been strengthened. Uh, this, this may soon enable to learn what is really mean to call it individual themselves. And these, these are my problem, problem statements. There, uh, there are overall three points. Uh, first one, from the brief re review of the literature and some empirical studies, the author find most of the studies have been done on addressing company employees' creativity and uh, a fewer work on university units. There is a serious need to explore and establish a framework for addressing university students' creativity and its relationship is mutation. And secondly, there is not a, enough attention has been done exploring the moderator between creative self-efficacy and creativity, let alone the motivation plays a moderating role between the two factors. And finally, there is a need to investigate the level of intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation being applied in the context of learning at higher education institutions. In order to support the significance of motivation, the role of motivation between creative self-efficacy and creativity is also need to be explored. And here are the research objectives. There are six uh, items here. The first one, to identify the relationship of intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation towards students' creativity. Secondly, to investigate the level of intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation that has been applied to universities in Shanxi, China. Three, thirdly, to investigate the impact of openness to experience, learning orientation, and team learning behavior on university students' creativity, respectively. And the fourth one, to measure the level of openness to experience learning goal orientation and team learning behavior on creative self-efficacy, respectively. Uh, fifth one, to determine the level of creative performance among university students in Shanxi, China. Uh, sixth one, to examine the impact of intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation towards student creativity in Shanxi, China. And the next page is the corresponding uh, research questions. And then I will introduce the research significance. There are mainly three aspects. To academic, this research would create a model to the existing body of knowledge on university students' creativity construction. And to policymakers, this research would be a guiding tool for university policymakers and educational uh, planners regarding university students' creativity in Shanxi province and the other regions across China. And to school administration, 
implications on school administration in terms of design institutional sport that could be rendered towards the student's creativity teaching settings. And uh, now, let's talk about the scope of the study. There are around four uh, points. The first one, this research is based on Chinese university students in Shanxi province in China. Secondly, the research group is the Chinese university students, and there are no primary, middle, and high school underage students in the youth group. And thirdly, the research object is university students' creativity, which is purposeful. And finally, the main content of this study is about creative performance. And then, and then chapter, chapter two, two about literature review. There are uh, five, five fundamental, fundamental theories are employed in my research. research. The, the first, first one is the social cognitive theory by Bandura. Secondly, the theory of individual creative action by Ford. And self-determination theory by Desi Ring. And self-regulatory theory by Huggins. The last one is goal setting theory by Loka. And here, I will introduce uh, each theory, uh, the brief concept of each theory, uh, one by one. The first one is about the social cognitive theory. Social cognitive theory explains psychosocial functioning in terms of uh, reciprocal causation. In this causal model, behavior cognitive and other personal factors and environmental events all operate as interacting determinants that influence each other bidirectionally. The second one is the theory of individual creative action. The theory of individual creative action represents a multi-factor and multi-level model capturing the complex of creative action. It is multi-factor because it explains how different factors at individual and contextual level influence creativity. And uh, it is multi-level because it is proposed that individual creation, a creative action, take place in four different social domains, groups, organizations, institutions, and the market. And these four social domains influence the likelihood of observing creative behavior. The third one is self-determination theory. This theory is an organismic dialectical uh, theory that views human beings as proactive organisms whose natural or intrinsic functioning can be either facilitated or impeded by the social context. And the fourth one, uh, self-regulation theory, refers to the process in which people seek to align themselves with the proper goals or standards. The last one is about the goal-setting theory. The goal-setting theory summarizes regarding the effectiveness of specific Difficult goals, the relationship of goals to effect, the mediator of goal effect, the relation of goals to self-efficacy, the moderator of goal effect and the general reality of uh, goal effect across people, tasks, countries, time spans, experimental designs, goal sources, and dependent variables. And next step, I want to introduce the operational definitions of variables, including my framework. Uh, for the dependent variable, creativity, uh, Torres has chosen to define creativity as the process of sensing problems or gaps in information, forming ideas or hypotheses, testing and modifying this hypothesis, and communicating the results. Uh, for the maybe 80 variable, creative self-efficacy uh, means the belief that one has the ability to produce create, creative outcomes. Uh, and uh, motivation plays a moderating uh, role in this framework. It concerns energy, direction, and persistence, which, which are all the aspects of activation and intention with regard to the behavior in question. And next page, uh, we will talk about the uh, independent variables. There are three independent variables in my framework. The first one is the openness to experience. Openness to experience describes the context to which individuals' imaginative, sensitive, and uh, to aesthetics 
curious, independent thinkers, and amenable to new ideas, experience, and unconventional perspectives. Learning goal orientation. Uh, learning goal orientation of seeking to develop competence by acquiring new skills and mastering new situations. And uh, to mention about uh, learn a uh, team learning behavior, Edmondson proposed team learning behavior as an ongoing process, which team members discuss and solve problems, as well as collectively engaging reflective decision making, asking questions, seeking feedback, and discussing errors or unexpected outcomes of actions. And the uh, Uh, from the review of the literature and conclusion of the current empirical studies, the, can, uh, the gaps, the knowledge gaps can be summarized as follows. Uh, the first one, most of the studies have been done on dressing company employees' creativity and a few work on university unit. There is a serious need to explore and establish a framework for dressing university students' creativity and its relationship with motivation. Secondly, There is not enough attention has been done on exploring a moderator between creative self-efficacy and creativity. Let alone the motivation plays a moderating role between the two factors. And finally, there is a need to investigate the level of intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation being applied in the context of learning at higher education institutions. In order to support the significance of motivation, the role of motivation between creative self-efficacy and creativity is also need to be explored. And this is the theoretical framework uh, of my study. And there are five hypotheses. These are the corresponding hypotheses in this framework. And chapter three, I will introduce the methodology. Uh, First, I want to introduce the research design. There are eight steps. The first one, select and evaluate the variables to justify the effect on university students' creativity. And secondly, prepare a cross-sectional study using survey to test the relevance and the relationship between the selected variables. Thirdly, formulate specific research questionnaires. Fourthly, uh, pilot testing on the questionnaires on its relevance and accuracy towards the best fit of the purpose and objectives of this research. And uh, uh, the fifth one, revise and finalize the questionnaire's draft. Uh, six, collect actual data by administrating the research questionnaires. Seven, test the hypothesis with appropriate statistical test method. Uh, and the last step is to analyze the data and evaluate the findings. To mention about the unit of uh, the analysis, this research aims at the university's, uh, university's individual students in Shanxi province in China, and the sample frame is the, the university students in Shanxi province in China. According to the literature and review studies, the sampling of these studies determined to be a combination of a cluster sampling and a, a convenience sampling. Uh, the, to mention about sample, sampling size, uh, Courage and uh, Morgan came up with a table for determining sample size for a given population. According to the table for determining sample size from a given population, the author designs the sample size of the study of 384 individual respondents from universities in Shanxi province in China. These are the corresponding uh, charts. A, a survey method is chosen for this study. The questionnaire will be given to the university students in Shanxi, China. The questionnaire for this study will be conducted through the network in the form of a questionnaire star software. A questionnaire star is a professional online questionnaire survey providing online design questionnaires, data collection, custom reports, and survey results analysis services. Uh, the survey questionnaire employs five-point uh, Likert scale. Uh, this scale is a five-point scale, which is used to allow the individual to express how much they agree or disagree with a particular statement. Now, this paper examines the reliability through complex alpha. It is generally believed that the 
reliability coefficient should be between 0 to 1. Uh, if the reliability coefficient of the scale is above 0 0.9, the reliability of the scale is good. If the reliable coefficient of the scale is between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9, the reliability of the table is acceptable. If the reliability coefficient of the scale is between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8, it means that some items of the scale need to be modified. Uh, the KMO test statistic is an indicator used to compare the simple correlation coefficients and the partial corre uh, correlation coefficients between variables. First, KMO and the Bartlett test were conducted on the three dominant predictors and the student's creativity. And then, an exploratory analysis uh, will be performed uh, based on the test result. Now, this study will use exploratory factor analysis to explain the underlying structure between variables. Therefore, in this study, exploratory factor analysis will be conducted to determine which hypothetical independent variables belong to the construct. As the data is collected, the analysis method will be added later based on the research need. And finally, uh, I will introduce the matters and layout of the questionnaire. There are mainly six sections in my questionnaire uh, mentioned about every variable in my framework and uh, uh, several items and sources that I've mentioned here in my uh, questionnaire. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. Miss Guo, yeah? Guo Jia. Yeah. 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 How do you pronounce it? Guo Jia. Guo Jia. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Guo Jia, yeah. The spelling Guo Jia, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, again, okay, congratulations. congratulations. Um, yeah, yeah, you have gone to, to the point, point of uh, defending, defending your proposal, proposal yeah? Uh, I'll, I'll go, go through, through the, the comment that I've listed uh, after, after going, going through, through your thesis, thesis that, that you have submitted. submitted. Okay, okay, the first, first one, one again is the, the research, research title. title. Yeah. yeah. Uh, research, go, to go to your research title. title. Okay. Yeah. The, the the good good, uh, good research, research title is, is when you read the title, it clearly tells you what exactly you're going to research on. Yes. Yeah, because it involves few variables there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number one, you tend to assess dominant predictors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you say dominant predictors, it's very vague because there are many predictors. Yes. So it's good that you uh, narrow down straight to the variable that you're going to research, which I believe here is the Mm -hmm. A creative self-efficacy. Okay. Do you mention that so yes. that now I understand what you are trying to investigate is creative self-efficacy yes. as a variable. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Then your dependent variable is student creativity. Yes. Okay. Now the only problem when I read through your thesis, sometimes you use creativity and then you also mention creative performance. Mm -hmm. So, so which is which as your dependent variable now? Creativity. Creativity. Yes. So, so what, what is, is creative, creative performance, performance in your context? context? Because you keep on also measuring. I measure that as eh? creative performance. Uh, ah. I have to uh, unit uh, the, the words in my thesis. Right. All right. right. So, so you, need you need to discuss, discuss that properly. properly yeah? Yeah? So, so if you, you want, want to use, use uh, creative, creative performance, performance in what context? Mm -hmm. Is it a measurement of creativity? Then, then you need, need to establish, establish that, that clearly, yeah. Yeah, okay. because when we did draw, I was had uh, I I, I was, was having an uh, impression that um, either you want, want to uh, examine creativity and sometimes creative, creative performance. Okay, I will make yeah. it more clear after. Yeah, yeah. Uh, specify that in your operational, operational definition. Mm -hmm. so, so when, when you, you say creativity, what is? is? So, so when, when you, you uh, mention creative, creative performance. performance what, what it is, okay. then what, what is the relationship between the okay. creativity and yes. creative performance? Yeah, so that at least whoever read is, is clear. Yes, yes. Okay. 
uh, your uh, table content is good because you follow the, the format, format yeah. Uh, but your, your list of table and figures, mm. then you have a list of table and figures. Oh, your, yeah, yeah. Uh, you need to improve yes. on that on mm. that format, okay? About the style of the and also your uh, writing style. Um, I know there are people who uh, start their paragraph with indenting. Mm. Um, if, if I were you, you forget, forget about the indenting, indenting because, because you know it, it's, it's not, not very, very you know uh, not, not very good in the presentation of the uh, the writing. So yeah. normally I, I, don't I don't use indent. I, I just go right, right from left. Yeah, yeah because, because if you, you have, have so many indent, then it look like you know yeah. it's mm. not properly aligned in in, in the oh, okay. of the various okay. paragraph. Okay. And there are quite uh, many areas uh, of grammatical errors as well. Yeah. So when you need, uh, when you submit a proposal defense, you need to properly check, yeah, the sentences and the wording, the spelling, and all that. Yeah, make sure they are good. Okay. Um, page seven, for example, some of the paragraph. Yeah. Uh, you need to relocate your discussion. Mm. Uh, in this case, uh, I would uh, recommend that you move up the. Uh, it's mentioned in here. Yeah, you can. I already yeah, yeah. put them up. Mm -hmm. You move up that first two paragraph to into the introduction rather than in the problem statement discussion. Yeah, just because that two paragraph is still uh, you are trying to highlight the issue and the scenario. Yeah, related to the background of the research. But when, when you write a problem, problem statement, statement, you want to focus, focus on the, on what and make sure that you want, that you want to address. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no need to repeat the same you know, scenario and the background of the. So you, so you move up that into the the, the, the introduction mm -hmm. section mm -hmm. rather than the you know the the uh, problem, problem statement area. Um, research, research objective, objective and question, and question uh, you need to again rewrite. Yeah, yeah, probably this is page nine for instance. Yes, I have to. Uh, yeah, research, research objective. objective. Uh, um, okay, for example, uh, you, you, you can show your um, um, research, research objective, objective, your slide. Uh, uh, question. Research, research question? Research objective. objective. Okay. okay. All right. It's okay. My first party. <laughs> my okay. There are two issues here. Yeah. Uh, number, number one is the flow. flow. All right. Is the flow of the objective. objective. Yeah. Normally, the flow objective is you always want to uh, state your what you want to do in context of the independent variable relationship between the variable variable and the dependent variable. All right. In your case, you start with the moderating, which is basically the motivation. All right. So you start with moderating rather than establish the relationship. Yeah. The 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 major relationship has to be established first. Yeah. All right. For example, you want to determine whether there is relationship between creative self-efficacy and creativity. Establish that first. This because before you want, want to talk about moderating, okay. you want to establish, establish that relationship first. Yeah. Because, because the moderating variable is going, going to influence that. Okay. You, you put, put these two, it's, it's a little bit confusing. confusing. Mm -hmm. right? So, so in, in your discussion, discussion you're going, going to test also this, then, then you relate. These are the, the sub variable of motivation. Yes. Uh, that's how you, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, of course, you need to redo your question. Uh, accordingly, accordingly yeah. then. Now, now I have, have uh, uh, in your, your thesis, thesis you, you only have, have five objectives. Yes. Now you have uh, six. Uh, six already. Yeah? <laughs> I have revised it. Okay. Go to your research uh, objective again. Uh, yeah. Objective. This is your, your question. Objective. All right. Mm. Uh, let, let me see whether you still have, have the same one to examine the impact of intrinsic motivation. And, and extrinsic motivation, motivation towards student, student creativity. creativity. Uh, not this one. Huh? Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, this one is missing in the question part. Okay, yeah. this one too should go up. <laughs> that's what I say, yeah? Yes, uh, I know that. Up. Uh, okay. okay. 
All right, All right. And, and then, then the, um, okay, um, review your significance, significance uh, okay, of Richard Pichman. Yeah, yeah, significant you wrote on, uh, uh, which is your significance? Can you show your significance? Mm -hmm. Okay, you have the um, in the context of body or knowledge. Okay. Um, policy makers, okay, the implication on, all right, yeah, uh, it's almost there, um, okay, just need, need to rewrite, yeah, in your thesis probably. Yes. <laughs> all right, um, uh, nine, review theoretical framework, all right, okay, page 44, here, page 44. Your, uh, can you show your, your research, research framework, framework again? Framework? Uh, which is your conceptual, you say here, theoretical framework. Okay. Yeah? Now, I know what I'm trying to say. Yeah? Yeah. Now, because when you put this way, um, then creative self-efficacy is problematic. Yeah. Now, people can also interpret as a mediating variable. Yeah. But, but what you're trying to say is, you're trying to establish relationship between creative self-efficacy and creativity. Yeah. So the better way is that, okay, you uh, display that all these three variables are sub-variable of creativity, uh, creative self-efficacy and self-efficacy as a construct of these two. So you have only one box on the left, which is the independent variable, which are make up of openness, to experience learning, learning goal, goal team, and, and your, your dependent variable is creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'm clear. Yeah, yeah you, you are, are going to examine uh, creative sex efficacy, which is made up of this variable, oh. and your dependent variable is creativity. Okay. All right. Yeah. Then you have your motivation at the moderating okay. variable. Then I'm clear. Okay. Yeah? Because, because you can interpret this as Openness, learning goal, and team as can be as an antecedent of creative self-efficacy, which you have to have test differently. Uh, yeah, so that's why you just put as an independent variable construct. Yeah, and creativity as a uh, dependent variable. Then it's clear. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, in your um, Development of your instrument, I didn't see your discussion on validation. All right. So very important that all research instrument in your case is a questionnaire. Yes. You need to discuss how you develop that questionnaire, whether by adopting previous literatures. Yes. Or sometimes you need to uh, add your own because sometimes later doesn't cover. Yeah, everything, everything that, that you want, you want to, to, uh, to research, so sometimes you need to modify. Mm. Yeah, we call it adopt and adapt. Mm. Yeah, but, but it needs to be validated before, before you use that questionnaire to collect yeah. that sample. So you need to show the discussion yes. yeah, on the okay. validation of that uh, instrument. Okay. Um, you also didn't uh, show any evidence or any uh, proposal how you're going to clean your data. Yeah, I mentioned uh, earlier um, in the discussion that um, whatever the number of data you collected, there are certain percentage of data that is not as good. Yeah, those are called outliers. Yeah, so you need to show the how you clean remove that outlier, all right? Okay, there are people who uh, who believe that that outlier has been addressed when they're doing the reliability test. Yeah, but there must be evidence of that. Yes. Yeah, we cannot assume just by doing reliability test, outliers are being removed because reliability tests are basically to check the, the reliability of each of the dimension item you use in your questionnaire. It doesn't tell that Automatically, the outliers are being removed. Yeah, outliers are basically those data that are very distant from the mean yeah, of the uh, total data that's collected. Okay, so I would like to see that as well. Yeah, because it's very important before you start analyzing your data, 
When you do your diet analysis, that data must be good. Yeah. On top of your KMO, you know, test and all that. Um, okay, questionnaires to, okay, um, your questionnaire probably you just need to improve on the format. Yeah, the way you uh, format your questionnaire. Um, okay, now lastly, of course, presentation. All right? Um, uh, I saw your, you are confident in your presentation. Uh, but, but I'm expecting, expecting as a PhD, PhD candidate, candidate yeah? mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, you should stand there and, and face us yes. as yes. audience and, and talk about, about your research, research yes. your subject <laughs> matter confidently yes. without yes. reading. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. yeah, I would I expect, expect that, that uh, slide I just for your, your quick reference. reference. Just okay. look at your few, you know, yeah. one, one or two, two seconds. Second. Then you should be talking to us. Otherwise, you're not talking to us, you're talking to the to, to the, the screen, screen. Yeah. you see that's not presentation <laughs> mm. I can I can understand undergraduate student but now you are a PhD candidate you yes. know you stand there okay the slide is just as a quick reference and uh, talk to us okay okay I will improve next time all right thanks okay yes. that's, uh, thank you I just have one question here can you show uh, the, the, the research objective slides <coughs> yeah, yeah, can, can you, you uh, for example, uh, I think in, in your write up, up here is an objective number three and four, basically to measure and then to determine, right? Can, can you uh, elaborate on, on the methods that you're going to use to do that, to achieve that? To measure the level of openness and also to determine the level of creative performance because it's not clear even in the there are, research design and on the description of the research method that you use. Uh, there are several uh, items adopted from uh, some uh, famous scholars uh, that uh, who have uh, uh, studied uh, the three uh, dominant predictors. Um, about the uh, independent variables. Uh, I will use their items or questionnaires to test. Questionnaire. Yeah. 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 But uh, I think when you look at the, the distribution of the questionnaire that you showed, probably it involves only a few questions, right? On this matter. Maybe I will find more questions. Uh, uh, maybe that's, that's not, not enough. enough huh? Yes, maybe I will find more uh, after my further research. Right? Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's really very limited now. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, I would like to invite Chen Ye. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my great pleasure to stand in front of you and give the presentation about my uh, thesis defense. Uh, so my supervisor is Dr. Shadi. Special thanks to my examiner, Dr. Anthony, and uh, Dr. Jared Roy. Okay. And uh, the title of my research is University Students' Engagement in Personal Development through technology-mediated learning and operational determinant predictors on students' learning outcomes in Shanxi province. And the contents consist of three parts, introduction, literature review, and methodology. Now let's move into introduction. A paradigm shift relates to the conception of higher education. Increasingly, the focus is moving away from input-based conceptions towards outcome-based notions of higher education. So we can say there is a growing focus on student learning outcomes. So learning and training are gaining popularities worldwide. And nations and international organizations, like some universities around the world, they have taken many measures 
to enhance university students' learning quality and learning outcome. Okay. And in the following presentation, I will use several figures to make a better illustration. Uh, in learning and innovation in rich the environment, it requires by new information-based economy. Uh, so actually, global competition among organizations increase, and the technological progress becomes more of a necessity for their development. Uh, consequently, it is imperative to revise the higher education curriculum with a technological revolution to fit into students' future career, and by equipping them technically to acquire extensive higher order skills, such as problem solving, collaboration, and simulation. So from this figure, we can say learning in technology mediated learning can make a solid foundation for students' future career. And also, actually, it is a process of preparation for them to participate in a global economy. Uh, this figure is the age structure of Chinese internet users. Uh, we can say uh, the overwhelming majority of Chinese netizens were aged from 10 to 39 years old. So we know students belong to this age group. And to be more specific, the occupational structure of Chinese internet users, we can see the first one, students were the largest group of Chinese internet users. So let's narrow down this concept into online education users. According to the data from iResearch, um, the number of online education users in China is 135 million, and it is expected in the next three or two, five years, uh, the market will grow at a rate of 14 to 21 percent. We can see maintaining a slower but stable growth. Okay, now as we have aware of the background information, now let's move into problem statement. Uh, actually, online education in China is booming in recent decades with the rise of technology. Uh, however, there is still a paucity of empirical research about university students' learning outcomes. And following the online learning Literature, we can see many research is about other perspectives, like students' characteristics or some technical features. So uh, few studies have taken the three levels uh, into consideration simultaneously, like from a learner's level, instructor level, and a technology level. And also, uh, we can say the relationship of technology use and uh, student engagement has not been investigated insufficiently. Um, and the measurement of student engagement in TML is ambiguous because there are so many dimensions of student engagement. Many researchers just focus one uh, dimension, okay? And the last one is about the incorporate teaching presence in my framework because many uh, researchers, they generally neglect to investi investigate instructors and their teaching activities in TML. So, you know, such perceived minimalization has been criticized by scholars and educators. Uh, here are altogether six objectives in my study. The, the first one is to describe students' online learning and mode, mode and characteristics in higher education. The second is to identify the level of online learning technology that has been applied to universities among uh, students in Shanxi province, and also to in analyze the impact of main dimensions of engagement on their learning outcomes. And the fourth one is to find out the way to improve uh, teaching presence in TML learning and to determine the moderating role of self-discipline and engagement because this part is also uh, seldom investigated. 
The last one is to uh, investigate the impact of subjective task value, self-perceptions, technology use, and the teaching presence on students' online learning. And uh, here, uh, I summarized the corresponding questions, research questions, according to the research objectives. And uh, here are altogether six. Uh, so, uh, the, the findings of this research provide insights to the academia, industry, and uh, students. The improvement of the technology has been conveying gigantic change to how students approach their learning. So, university students today need access to uh, te advanced technologies and uh, media-rich media access to help them to investigate, comprehend, and communicate in their future working conditions. And also they study make contributions to a theory research model and empirical research about learning outcomes. Next is the scope of the research. Uh, because this research is based on learning outcomes in TML, uh, consequently, uh, traditional face-to-face -face communication or learning is not our consideration. And also, uh, the research, research group is university students in Shanxi, so there are no primary, middle, high school or college students. Uh, here are the operational definitions, and they are all together seven uh, variables. Now let's move to the second part, literature review. Uh, in my study, I applied all together three theories in my study, uh, expectancy value theory, self-determination theory, and uh, the community of inquiry framework theory. Now let's look at the first one, expectancy value theory. Mm, John William Atkinson developed the expectancy value theory in the 1950s and the 1960s in an effort to understand achievement motivation of students. And in the uh, year of 1980s, Jacqueline Eccles expanded this research into the field of education. And uh, according to expectancy value theory, we can say uh, students' achievement and achievement-related choices are most approximately determined by two factors. The first one is expectancy for success. The second is subjective task values. Uh, this is a framework, so my focus of study is here, subjective task value, and the relationship of this part and this part. So my second uh, theory is self-determination theory. The initial study dates back to 1970s. Uh, however, in the mid-1980s, Daichi and the Rand's elucidation of self-determination is a uh, comparatively uh, comprehensive statement of the theory. And the self-determination theory is a relatively new theory of learning motivations that relates to the students' independent learning. And the theory points out that the key to understand learning motivations lies in three basic psychological needs, uh, namely competence, autonomy, and relatedness. Uh, so actually, you know, self-system model of motivational development is actually a modelization of self-determination theory. So my focus in my study is about the relationship of self part and with the action part engagement and the learning outcome. Uh, the last theory is the community of inquiry framework theory. A community of inquiry uh, is based on collaborati collaborative knowledge creation concept founded on a community of philosophy inquiry theory. So this theory was inspired by educational philosophy. Uh, three scholars, Pierce, Dewey, and uh, Lipman. So 
Garrison and、uh, sorry, Garrison Anderson and the Archer they propose the community of inquiry、uh, model. Uh, as a template or two to guide educators and researchers to do some education research. So framework most、uh, widely used in online and. And the first. And、however, as the benchmark and indicator of education quality and learning experience, student engagement in literature is still、uh, sorry, remains elusive to define and and is interpreted in different ways. You know, many researchers they have reached the consensus that student engagement is multidimensional. However, agreement on multidimensionality differs from.、Uh, Agreement on the number and the types, which range from two to six.、Uh, so the defining of student engagement has broadened to additional and more nuanced dimensions.、Uh, so my study focus is here: the relationship of different dimensions of student engagement and the student learning outcomes.、Uh, here. We can see some scholars. They have offered a two multi, a two-dimensional model,、uh, namely behavior and emotional, and also the multi-dimensional nature of student engagement is defined、uh, from three perspectives. That is behavior, emotional, and cognitive. And another scholar. Chris Tenson, he conceptualized student engagement as four dimensions: that is, emotional, cognitive, behavior,、uh, academic behavior, cognitive, and affective. And also, there are some other classifications of student engagement. Okay. And here, the definitions of technology-mediated learning. So actually, TML is my. Uh, study context.、Uh, that is,、um, actually, this term is a broader term to encompass so many different forms of technologies, like、um, blended learning, online learning, learning through learning、uh, management system, and learning with technologies. Okay,、uh, this is the gap of. Theory and、uh, altogether four. The first one is the moderator of self-discipline between the relationship of student engagement and the learning outcomes. So actually, maybe it is a common sense that self-discipline is very important in the online learning. However,、uh, few studies have investigated the relationship between them. And the second is the research. Uh, of the relationship between teaching presence and student engagement is ill defined in the context of TML. The third one, the measurement of engagement in T in technology in how the learning environment is ambiguous. And the last one is,、uh, although the growth of online education 
uh, it is booming in China. However, there is a positive paucity of empirical research of, of this part. This is my conceptual framework. Subjective task value, sub perceptions, technology use, and the teaching presence. And the student engagement is the mediate. Self discipline is the moderator. And I would like to investigate the, uh, the influence of this independent variables towards learning outcomes, especially in TML setting. Uh, this is a corresponding, uh, they are the corresponding hypotheses. Okay, the last part, methodology. Uh, this study uh, employed a quantitative correlational study design and the self-report survey measures were used in this study. And the unit of analysis of this study is individual students. And the sample frame is undergraduate students in Shanxi province. And the sampling techniques. Cluster sampling method together with convenient sampling techniques were employed because uh, cluster sampling method was chosen for it is cost efficient and help the researchers to identify the mm, the you know the representative groups of the participants. And as to the convenient sampling techniques, because by clustering, then you have to test every individual student in the population. However, um, because the large population and the it concerns the concerns the name the name of students concerned about the confidentiality, so it is beyond the researchers get the name list. So I would like to use convenient sampling techniques and. The number of popu uh, population uh, here is 130,456 altogether. So uh, according to the calculation, raw soft, the sampling size is 384. And because there would be attrition, an uh, additional 25 of calculation is added. So altogether, 480 questionnaires were issued. Um, so in this study, uh, questionnaires were, was employed and the data was collected by distributing a professional electronic survey instrument. And the survey questionnaire employs five-point five linkage skill. Uh, this research examines reliability through Kronfa Alpha. Kronfa Alpha is the most common measure of internal consistency. And it is most commonly used when you have um, the multiple related questions in your questionnaire uh, that forms a skill. And you wish to test or determine if it is reliable. And then KMO was used. KMO test, statistic test, uh, is an indicator used to measure the simple correlation coefficients and uh, uh, and the partial correlation coefficients between variables. So after this was first used, then exploratory factor analysis was conducted to determine which hypothetical independent variable belongs to the construct. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Chen Ji. Chen Ye. Chen Ye. <laughs> well done. I think you've done quite a lot of work. Uh, I'm actually very impressed uh, your amount of uh, references. Yeah. Uh, quite comprehensive. Thank uh, the you. The only, uh, only thing I have to say yeah. is the citations. 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 citations uh, you, the format of the citations yeah. is surname year, most common. Oh, that means you, you do not put first names, you do not put initials oh. in, in citations. Yeah. Um, everywhere, you know, in the whole, your whole yeah. report is like that. Okay. Um, so 
look, look, look up the APA, APA format, format guide, guide and, 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 and be consistent. Be consistent. Also, also, if you, you or citations, citations, be consistent throughout. throughout. Don't put for one and then another one you don't put. <laughs> the best is, the best is actually just to accept it. It's just surname year, open and close bracket. Um, two other things I saw, but I see that you have corrected it in your slides. Uh, yeah. the, the first is in chapter one, you have two illustrations. Oh. Today, 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 but it's not in here. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I would, would encourage you to do that because when you put numbers in text, mm. it's very hard to read and to visualize. But if you put it in a graphical form like that, yeah. any, any numbers in the text, you know, when you read a two or three paragraphs of, of numbers, mm. we cannot visualize as yeah. well as with a, a picture, as they say, paints a thousand words. Huh? Okay. So that, I noticed that that's what you've done. Uh, also, I noticed that you have improved on your framework. You have arrows uh, and you have uh, the hypothesis. Can, can I just see that again? Hypothesis. Yeah, your, your conceptual framework. Yes. yes, my, my, my comment was, was before, before, before I, I saw this, this my yeah. comment yeah. was place your hypothesis on the arrow mm -hmm. and show the direction of the arrow, oh. which you have done now, which is fine. Yeah. You have done it here, but not here. Oh, not. And okay. I, think, I, think I think H5 and H6 should, should switch. Uh, which one? I think, I'm not, I'm not sure. sure. Because the student engagement, engagement, student engagement yeah. impact yeah. learning outcome. Maybe, Maybe H5 and H6, H6 to see, but you, you talk to your supervisor about that. I'm not sure. Okay. You, um, also, when you use formulas, when you are trying to show formulas, uh, I know formulas are very hard to build up because it's very complex, but you should number them. There is a way to number the formulas and then list them, list them in your uh, list of formulas at your table of contents page. Huh? Okay. Um, other than that, I think, I think uh, you're, you're on the right, on the right track. track huh? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. This is an interesting, interesting area, area because, because a lot of your references, references about 30% are, are, are very recent, recent yeah. which is good. Okay. Uh, I, counted I counted the number of references, of references that are within, within five, five years, years and you have, you have quite, quite a lot. It's okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, oh, oh, one, 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 one other thing. thing. Um, when you, when when you are doing citing a secondary source, there is a way to do it. You know, no, let's, let's say, say uh, somebody, somebody relates to an old theory, theory and then you're, you're citing, citing him, uh, that is as cited in, uh, so, so you must, must you must learn how to write, write that properly also. also. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. Chen Yi. Yeah. <laughs> you're about 45 to 50 percent of your journey, your PhD journey, almost halfway there. And... Uh, another maybe 50 percent or so for you complete um, i'm going to comment based on my reading of your paper as well as your presentation very quickly um, some things are small small thing minor minor things some things are uh, maybe need further consideration firstly um, the title of your I, I always look at, I like to look at the title of the thesis, the title of an article, and the title of the book. Uh, they say that the guideline for the title of a thesis, PhD thesis, usually ranges, a good title usually ranges from 12 to 15 words. I know, and the way you phrase the title is so catchy that uh, when people, one quick glance at it, 
Yeah. People uh, people want to know more about what you've written. Uh, so yours is 22 words. I don't know whether it's a bit uh, longer than the expected expectation. And also, uh, your research methodology is quantitative. Yeah. And uh, sometimes when, when you are doing a quantitative study, uh, some of the uh, terminology should also be quantitative in that sense. I know it's, uh, you know, you, we, we learn all these things. You know? uh, if you are doing a qualitative uh, study, some of your languages and uh, definition uh, terminology or is a qualitative. Uh, so in that sense, uh, qualitative study always uses the word exploration in their papers, in their title. Whereas quantitative tend to use examination of the issues, of the determination, uh, something for you to think about. And then the abstract, abstract, um, um, you, you know, the abstract, when people read the abstract, they have a quick snapshot of your whole paper, yeah. your proposal as well as your thesis. So, um, but your abstract did not cover small something like the key literature review topic. Just one line, one sentence, if you can add in. Okay. It will cover the whole snapshot of your three chapters. Yeah. I will add later. Yeah. Actually, when you finish chapter five, later on, you have to review your abstract as well because it's going to include chapter four and five. So it's a good snapshot of your whole thesis. Okay. Right. Right. And, and then, then I, I noticed that, that uh, you, have you have presented, presented the uh, background of the study in your PowerPoint presentation, mm -hmm. but I don't see uh, uh, some, some kind of a background in your paper, paper here. here. Yeah. Maybe you can just incorporate that in. Okay. And um, um, your problem statement, I can see and understand all the things that you've written and the gaps that you have raised. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could summarize that to two pages, all the key points, I think, I think four pages is long for me, for me uh, yeah. and my understanding and my journey of learning. Okay. Uh, if you can put your, write your problem statement in two instead of four, but, but at the same time still keep the issues, the, the things you want to uh, study on in your, uh, related to your topic. Yeah. Now, that leads me to the research objective and research question. I think there were six objectives and six questions. To, to me, me there's a lot, lot. lot. A lot. Okay, <laughs> uh, that's the way <laughs> Malaysians speak. Uh, six, six objectives yeah. and six, six questions is quite big study. Uh, yeah. I was, I was thinking, thinking about it really since yeah. yesterday yeah. and one or two days before. Yeah. Uh, I, I think three or four, four objectives, objectives will be nice. nice. Okay. Considering, Considering that, that you have something, something like three years, years yeah. or maybe three and a half, four years, but you can go in depth in all those. I don't, I don't know, know maybe, maybe you discuss, discuss with your supervisor. supervisor. But I really I think, think six objectives, objectives and six questions is a lot. A lot. Okay. okay. And also, also the, the significance, significance of the research, research you know, there's a repetition of the words that uh, is even in your presentation, significant to academy, significant to industry, significant to just put academy, industry and student, no, no, no need to keep repeating the words mm. when you present it. And then, and then 1.8, you combine summary and organization of the chapters. Maybe you can just put separate them when 1.8 put the organization of the chapter or the structure of your thesis. And then 1.9, summary. It's good to have introduction and summary in each chapter of the thesis. Okay. Introduction, summary, introduction, summary. Good suggestion. Yeah, chapter one, you combine uh, summary and organization of the chapters. Right? And I was, I was reading, reading chapter, chapter 2, two your, your overview, overview. Chapter, chapter 2 overview. overview. Let, Let me have, have a quick look at it, uh, page 20. 20. You were describing, describing chapter, chapter 2 in your overview. overview. There, there you talk about, about this study makes two contributions contribution to the university students, students online learning literature. literature. First, First, blah, blah, blah. Second, second blah, blah, blah. blah. I was I wondering, wondering why two contributions? contributions? Because in your significant, there is three significant. Am I correct? Yeah. So actually, the significance of the study 
after chapter 5 becomes contribution. So in your chapter 2, you wrote why. Maybe you should write three contributions instead of two. Yeah. The contribution, the significant will later on become the contribution. Oh, yeah. Right? Okay. Um, you can discuss that with the supervisor. It's okay if you, 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 you think my comment is... Yeah. Is, uh, right. And then uh, in, chapter, in chapter 2, 2.3.5, student engagement in your table of content, the sub point is not there. 2.3.51, It's not in the table of content, but it's inside the paper. In your I guess the use is the format of our university. Oh, that's the format, yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes the formatting huh, in these universities. The, the gaps in the literature is well written, and uh, you raise everything up that is real. You know, the fundamental theories, I think mentioned a little bit yesterday about theories. I don't want to talk so much about it. But the way you wrote the first theory, self-determination theory, the way you researched and wrote, is very clear it's a theory. The way you trace right from the beginning how the theory emerged, how it went through a process of time, and you, you can, can show, show all that. that. And when you, you and I read it, I can say you are so confident to say that this is a theory. theory. But when, when you wrote the community of inquiry, inquiry theory, you, uh, you, 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 you just put the title there as the community of inquiry theory. theory. But, but when, when you, you start, start explaining, explaining uh, I don't I seem to get the, com you express the confidence that it's a theory. You keep saying it's a model. So anyway, it's not important, but what is important to me is we need to know the difference between a theory, a model, and a concept. Okay. A lot of models and theory has not involved into a theory yet. And if you look at the time frame of some of these models and theories, they are quite new. Yeah, okay. Right? Yeah, you're right. Because so, this question sometimes confuses yeah. me. Even your writing shows your confidence, yeah. whether it is a theory or a model or a concept. So you got to... Yeah, I don't know, rewrite something, something or check, check something, something out. Yeah. Okay, whether it is uh, fu fundamental it theories and models. Yeah, much clear. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and then, then uh, uh, briefly, uh, that in your, your paper, paper you say that it's a theoretical, theoretical framework, but, but in, in your presentation, you say that it is a conceptual framework. framework. Oh. That's a different, you know. Yeah, different. <laughs> I, I don't know which is which, but I think it uh, looks like it's a theoretical framework. Yeah. I'm going to go quickly. And to, um, I mean, before I forget, after you, 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 you wrote a lot about the theories, but after the end of the theory, you need to mention one or two lines how these theories is related to your study. Oh, yes. You didn't mention that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, a nice description, description about all the theory, but you need to mention how is it related to your study? Yeah. How is it connected? How is it? Yeah. What, what, how is it underpinning your study? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I don't know, but I, I thought about this as well. That in the PhD thesis, uh, there should be... PhD philosophy. That means you have a need a brief write up on your holistic philosophical position. You need to write. You need to give a justification for your position, the paradigm you're choosing, quantitative. It is the hardest part to write, right? And uh, uh, so. My conviction is that PhD students should know something about the philosophy stance or position. Okay. Add one or two more lines to describe the instrument used for the study. You mentioned about the instrument. Uh, instrument. Yeah. 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 Um, add, add one or two, two more lines. lines. Something, Something missing there. there. Maybe oh. sometimes you write, 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 and then you move <laughs> to the next point. But yeah. in between there is a, something missing. Yeah. So you, uh, that's about, about the instrument. instrument. Okay. okay. 
and some little little things like the referencing references the word is missing references uh, the word references is missing and then the appendix one appendix two like uh, Dr. Oh, Anthony yeah, has yeah. mentioned you're going to follow the APA formatting yeah, how, how, how you write it in front of my questionnaire right yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right that's right <laughs> okay. whether you want to present it appendix one appendix two uh, it has to follow the APA yeah yeah, yeah. okay you're doing very well. Uh, I make a lot of comments, but it's to enhance your thesis. And, yeah, uh, you know, and some of the things you can discuss with your supervisor. Yeah, very brilliant suggestion. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. Next, uh, I'd like to invite Chen Dak Tai. Two minutes. Um, I think uh, there are different uh, levels of uh, people here, some people who are fresh in their journey, some people who are very advanced in their journey. That feedback that you are getting. Now, uh, these feedbacks that you get, And you should take that into account. But anyone who has read more than one book on research methodology knows uh, that research is such a thing uh, that when we start defining concepts, percepts, theories, hypotheses, uh, different people uh, will stand at a different perspective. Uh, so when you all get this view, I don't want you all to think that they are finding fault with you. No. They are telling you something. Yeah? Um, so learn from that and see how much of it you can take. Do not be discouraged by any of uh, comments that may not agree with what you have put in your submission or your slides. I just want to touch on the point which Dr. Jerry made just now whether it is a theory or hypothesis or model. In the world of management, almost every theory started off as a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an assumption we make about life. It is an assumption about what things might be. Every theory starts off as a hypothesis. Yeah? Then people test that hypothesis. If that this is tested and proven over and over again, then some lucky fellow will be able to codify it and then that will become a theory. And very often, the fellow who finally codified it and published it uh, will then get the credit for the theory. I will give you an example from the world of finance. There was a concept that maybe the stock markets of the world are not predictable. So there was an efficient market hypothesis that was created. And this hypothesis said that some markets behave in a way where they will take uh, business information into account and that business information gets translated into the share price of a listed company. Hypothesis. Efficient market hypothesis. However, how much of that information comes in depends on the efficiency of the market. And the market can actually be strong form efficient, semi-strong form efficient, weak form efficient. Scenarios were created. Someone came up and said, well, what can we take from this? This is based on information that becomes available to the market. So someone took the hypothesis. Can you imagine three-pronged hypothesis? He took the three-pronged hypothesis and he said, what we can theorize from here is that when the market changes its value for any listed share, it changes its value based on its expectation 
of value from that share. Because market information becomes available randomly, expectations also change randomly. Therefore, all of these hypotheses prove a random walks theory. Hypothesis became theory. Then from the theory, you don't just have one model. One theory can spawn so many models. Now the random walks theory has in fact spawned so many different models uh, for stock market valuation. Remember, hypothesis becomes theory. the seeds out of it, and I can refer to a specific Dear Professor, Stamina and everyone, uh, my full name is Trần Đức Tài, I'm from Vietnam. Today I would like to present project uh, update my research with topic uh, Factor Affecting Lecturer Commitment to the University, a study in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Uh, today I uh, present to Chapter 4, uh, Research Pre-Show. About chapter 4, um, I, um, I use SBS and AMOS uh, statistical analytics software to analyze the data, which uh, include SBS software for you for preliminary evaluation of the scale group, Chromebook and FAR, combination assay, AFI and sampling decrypting statistics analytics. And the second, I for you to analyze CFI model and hypothesis were implemented with same model estimation were implemented with bootstrap. Conclude. In order to accept uh, an open model, including a multiply regression estimate. Correlation the priority is to use AMOS with the symbol symbol model fail debate dependent variable no inter um, intermediate variable just using it is enough to evaluate the um, the sequencing of data analysis were a flow the first step information preparation. Collect the questionnaire, clean the information, and cause necessary information in the questionnaire. Input and analyze data with SBSS software. Step: Decrypting statistic research. Conduct decrypting statistic the collected data. The reliability evaluation. Test whether Reaches the standard deviation of deliberate test by from back and far analytic. The first step is plot factor factor analytic, analyze the scale with EFI. The sixth step, a scale step by CFI. The seventh step, same analytic test, deliberate of model and estimate is with bootstrap and the final. A multi group, multi group structure analysis. About decrypting statistical analysis, I started in chapter 3. The author conducted an interview with 800 spots. The number of spots collected were 780, and the violent spots were 772 spots. Data collected from 772 of the was were used for analyzing book then. Below are the results of the 
statisticon analytic and the uh, up 772 participants about uh, below the slide the reality statistical analysis about uh, gender material tactics uh, age. I will um uh, I will um the uh, description and uh, and uh, um, analyze this data. Um, education experience organization view title position income. Where did you study your Finnish education and hometown for lecturer? The second result of scale test, the data collected were also connected to measure the care through the method of using from back and far confidence to determine the observed variable and not to table to measure the care. That's care. Result of testing theoretical scale from survey data are presented in table below. In um, working conditions. The job satisfaction just in uh, organization and organization commitment is very uh, survey uh, variable um, leadership and uh, job satisfaction and trust in organization scale can ensure the level deliverable of service variable and retained in uh, sequence analysis. Result of EFA discovery factor analysis. Quiz uh, KMO um, 0 0.8316 um, variance adjusted and um, if, uh, issue value. Uh, the factor analysis for independent variable has shown that uh, there are seven factors that are not Derived from um, from analysis with reliability. First, uh, analysis a by with dependent variable. This the observed variable of each dependent variable in the high covariance model. The result of first analysis confirms CFI the criteria of measuring the approach reliability. Uh, of the model show that uh, with uh, follow um, uh, up uh, standard from um, st um, uh, compared to uh, standard and uh, condition uh, show the model high market re relevant. Influence of factor on the lateral commitment um, analysis of same structure. The first structure on Model result in the following test value. Uh, quiz data analysis um, show the model is suitable for market. However, the test result influence uh, to organization commitment and college relationship to organization commitment are not statistically significant. Therefore, the structure model needs to be uh, reviewed. The result of structural model analysis after eliminating the influence of leadership to uh, organization commitment all its relationship to uh, organization commitment are a follow. The indi uh, indicator of uh, suitability of model show that the value um, show the model is relevant to the market. Test bootstrap with the survey sample of uh, 772 people, the bootstrap uh, for the will be done by author with sample size of uh, 1,000. The test I follow. The result, um, the result show that the coefficient in uh, the model are not uh, different from model then to my quiz sample size of uh, 772. This suggests that the model is due to uh, 
the sample size of 1000 and uh, the estimate in the model can be trusted. Summary the hypothesis uh, testing. Um, see, um, leadership has a uh, positive impact on the electoral commitment to the uh, organization um, not accepted and uh, college relations a positive impact on the electoral commitment to the organization not accepted. From testing heterosis, the author gives the model of a synthetic research result and follow the final the final framework. Thank you for listening. Because I very best <laughs> speaking English, I hope uh, everyone uh, take care and support for me. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Thank you. So I worked with him. Can I add something here? Yeah? Uh, because just now, earlier, uh, when uh, the uh, statistical analysis was being presented. Now, one of the we sometimes miss out, you know, and Prof always emphasizes this. The whole idea of uh, doing PhD research work is that it must be in-depth. In-depth. If you identify something, that there's a trend, there's something that you need to take, you need to go very deep into it. And then really, it must be comprehensive. That means you have said everything that you need to say about it. There should be nothing. As something that helps you. It's a crutch. Yeah? one of the factors that we are testing. If it is above 0 0.7, we say, good, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I will accept this now. Cronbar Alpha is also based on the theory, by the way. It originally uh, was derived from a mathematical theory. You showed us just now the table, yes? Which is a beautiful table because it reminded me of the theory. And what the theory says is, Cronbar Alpha will show the stability of the data in your sample. Uh, and that stability, stability therefore means the predictive ability. Anything that is stable, it means that predictively it is very good. Yeah? Um, it shows the predictive ability of the data that I am analyzing because it is stable. It is excellent if it is above 0 0.9. It is good if it is above 0 0.8. It is acceptable if it is above 0 0.7. So you see, do not just take one level, 0 0.7 more than that. Very good, thank you, I'm happy. <laughs> no, within those, uh, like he had, his Cronbar Alpha I saw just now, there were three or four that were above nine. Income was above nine. Uh, the branding of the institution was above nine. The commitment of the organization was above nine. You know why this is important? In chapter four, you will write this analysis. In chapter five, you will then focus on these key main areas and you will say, these are the really reliable factors that will be good predictors of what students are going to do, what teachers are going to do in terms of their commitment, what customers are going to do in terms of their buying decision, etc., etc., etc. Yeah? So, this is what you have to do. Chapter 4 should therefore become uh, the springboard for you to really go in depth in Chapter 5. And Chapter 5 is where you present yourself to the world. Yes? Uh, just to add on. Thank you so much. Good job done. <laughs> Yes. 
Next, I would like to invite Opara Edmund. Greetings, everyone. My name is Opara Edmond Ebedeke. I'm here to present my research proposal. I'm here to present my research proposal. Title Factors that Influence Information System Utilization Among SMEs in Nigeria Using Technology Acceptance Model as the Underpinning Theory. And my supervisor is Associate Prof. Dr. Kashaya. Here are the outline of the things I'm going to present today. Introduction, literature review, methodology, conclusion, and the references. Here are the highlights of the introduction. Business competition have increased over the years. Business competition have increased over the years. The pace of the competition is not limited to large-scale multinational organization, but also among SMEs. Can you hear me very well? Small, small and mid-scale enterprises have utilized the power of information technology to boost competitiveness and increase achieved profitability. Despite the relevance of information systems in today's environment, in many regions and countries around the world, it has not been established why information system adoption is slow in many developing countries like Nigeria. This section is the continuation of the introduction. From the contextual exposition, previous studies have not applied tested theoretical underpinning to examine the critical factors influencing ICT adoption in Nigeria. Problem statement. Business competition is becoming difficult to achieve and sustain, especially among small and medium scale enterprises. Large scale entities could easily absorb and transfer the cost to the end users. It is not easy with SME owners due to limited skills and scope, which is driven by low technological operational efficiency. Studies on information System usage in Nigeria were prescriptive and mainly literature review with little empirical rigor and insight on the predictive factors of information system usage among SMEs. This research will conduct empirical study on the factors that lead to the utilization of information system and how SMEs can close the gap on the utilization of information system, which is very low in Nigeria. Research objective. The primary objective of this study is to understand the factors that lead to low usage of information system among SMEs in Nigeria using technology acceptance model as the underpinning theory. Why the main objective is to describe how SMEs can utilize information system in their business to improve policy and decision making increase competitiveness in their business environment, satisfy customers' needs, and at the same time, maximize their profits. The research objective consists of five variables. Sorry, five objectives. To discover how top management support influences information system usage among SMEs. To ascertain how 
to ascertain the influence of perceived benefits of information system on information system usage among SMEs, to examine critically the mediating role of the relationship between perceived ease of use and perceived usefulness on the actual usage of information system among SMEs, to ascertain how external assistance influences information system usage among SMEs, to determine how having information system knowledge influences information system usage. The research questions are in correspondence with the research objective. Limiting clause. The study will be situated in a particular state in Nigeria. The choice of Imo state is driven by the large pool of SMEs in the state. Population delimitation will cover business owners who have been in business for three years and above. The study will be based on cross-sectional timeline, which provides that all data will be collected once. Significance of study. Theoretical significance of the study. The proposed studies will provide improved perspective on theoretical stand of technology acceptance model in acceptance and adoption of information systems among SMEs. Significance to industry, significance to others. Scope of study. This study will examine those factors which are essential in ICT adoption. The unit of analysis will be individual SMEs owners in the service sector in order to increase the accuracy of the data. Literature review. This area has been explored in the literature review. And here I have a summary on the literature review. Selection of independent challenges. After exploration of the literature review, five, four independent variables were selected. External assistance. External assistance includes government support, IT consultants, competitive pressure, and IS training. The author here in 2015 pointed external assistance as a main determinant satisfaction among SMEs. Information system knowledge, awareness and understanding equals to knowledge of information system. I made in 2015 pointed knowledge of information system as among factors affecting adoption of information system among SMEs. Passive benefit. The adoption of Information and communication system by SMEs depends on the perceived impact and benefit it will have on organization, according to the authors. Management support. Management support includes family involvement, organizational structure, and cultural influence. Telo, P. 2015, pointed family involvement, organizational structure, and culture. The hypothesis in this research, external assistance will have positive and significant If benefits will have positive and significant influence on perceived usefulness towards information system usage. Management support will have positive and significant influence on perceived usefulness towards information system usage. Perceived ease of use will mitigate the effect of perceived information system usage. Perceived usefulness will have a positive and significant effect on usage of information system. Research framework. 
The result framework consists of four independent variables. The mediating variable and the dependent variables are adopted from the technology acceptance model. Methodology, research study. Quantitative research has been adopted for this study, and data collection will be based on questionnaire method. The target population is all SMEs, managers, slash owners in Nigeria. Sampling design. Probability stratified random sampling techniques have been adopted for these studies. By adopting this method, all SMEs operating in Imo states will have the opportunity to be selected. This the stratifying random sampling will give more accuracy to the data collected in this study. Research. The research we use 384 as the sample size. This is consistent with Gregory and Morgan 1970 sample table, which states that 384 sample is sufficient for a population more than 250,000 with 99% confidence interval. Redan 2013 estimated the number of SMEs in Imo State to be over 1 million. The data in this research will be collected primarily using questionnaire from registered SMEs owners in Imo State. Questionnaire will be distributed to 384 SMEs managers slash owners in Imo State. Data analysis. Descriptive analysis, validity, reliability, correlation, multiple correlation analysis will be conducted to establish will be conducted in this research. The results will identify those factors that lead to low utilization of information system among SMEs. The proposed study will broaden the understanding of information system and its products on SMEs. The study will increase SME's participation in utilization of information systems. The knowledge acquired from this study will equip SME's managers slash owners with strong potentials in the area of competitiveness and to generate more profit. Managers slash owners of SMEs will understand the benefits of information systems in terms of staff training, fund allocation, identifying business opportunities. The study will contribute in the existing knowledge of SMEs utilization of information system. This is the time frame of how I'm going to conduct my work. The research proposal, the green color represents the time for drafting the research proposal. The green color will represent the period in which the drafting of literature review will be completed, and the orange color is when the final submission of the research will be done. So, conclusion. Though business organizations utilize information systems to improve competition and profit in their businesses, its usage among SMEs in developing countries like Nigeria are relatively low. Few studies conducted in Nigeria were prescriptive and literature review with little empirical rigor and insight on the predictive factors. It is in the right of the empirical shortcoming that this study is designed using technology acceptance model as the underpinning theory to investigate the factors that influence information usage among SMEs in Nigeria. Quantitative research method has been adopted in this study and the data collection will be based on questionnaire method. Target population is all SMEs manager slash owner of Nigeria. sampling technique will be used to select the sample size. The research will use 380 as the sample size to collect data for registered SMEs. Descriptive statistics, validity, reliability, and multiple regression process will be conducted to establish the relationship between the variables. Reference. 
Thank you. Presentation. Uh, you are in which, uh, which semester? In which semester? First semester, right? First semester. Apply major revision for uh, writing your chapter one to three. Uh, the first important thing that uh, attracts the attention of examiners is about formatting. Uh, if you do not follow the format, so it arises many questioner, questions from examiners because uh, the adjustments, uh, spacing, uh, all the font size, the way that you cite the references is not correct. Okay, please read the guideline of MUSC PhD thesis uh, carefully. Then uh, the next question is about uh, what is the main contribution that you want to achieve later on? Yes, as a PhD. Because um, uh, I want to make sure that uh, your uh, proposal uh, or your future is good enough for PhD level. Yes, because you know that what is the different uh, difference between master and PhD thesis. So PhD thesis should have the main finding and achievement as a contribution. So here, my contribution in this study is to that those factors that can influence or encourage SMEs in Nigeria to adopt information based on their businesses. Okay. Is there any other study about this in Nigeria? So this is the first. Yeah, there is study about it, but none have applied it, tested theoretical okay. oh, So this is the uniqueness of your work. Uh, the next one is about the uh, theoretical and uh, or conceptual framework. You know that uh, I don't see any other any theories from other conducted studies. No figure about other studies theory relevant to your area. You just come out with your own uh, theoretical framework. The, the theoretical framework, the independent variable, I selected it from other studies. But you don't mention here in chapter 2. In chapter 2, it's there. No, uh, you know that I don't see any figure. You know that uh, we expect to see the figure as a theoretical, because we call it theoretical framework. But I don't see any framework here. And the mediated variable and the dependent variable we are adopting from the technology as a model. That's why I put it as a Yes, but where is the model? Where is the figures? The figure? Yeah. You're supposed, supposed to, to present, present in chapter, chapter two, two. Okay. but I don't see any. Okay. okay. And for, for chapter, chapter three, you, you mentioned that you are uh, choosing uh, a stratified random sampling. Yeah. Why you choose a stratified? Because it will it will help you it will give more accuracy to the study and with the random with the stratified random sampling, SMEs. All SMEs owners have the opportunity to be selected. Uh, so it means that your SMEs unit will be the, um, I mean, as a unit for stratification. Okay. Those who have been in business for more than three years. And uh, for writing chapter three, you need to improve writing chapter three. You don't write about your analysis, no explanation about analysis, no explanation about questionnaire design. And also for each method, you need to support using um, similar references and literatures. So here you need to improve your chapter three. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you your presentation. presentation. Could you please go back to your problem statement?
So could you uh, explain in a simple way, just in a sentence, what's the problem that you are going to address here? I mean, what problem you have found? And that's why you are going to do this, conduct this study, OK? The first paragraph there, it says that uh, business competition has become difficult to achieve and sustain, especially among small and medium-scale enterprises. No, so I, I, I ask, ask you to explain, explain for me, me not, not I can read also. also. Okay. okay, I ask you your understanding. Secondly, of your problem statement. It says large scale entities could easily absorb and transfer from cost to the end users, but this is not seen among the SOEs because of the, the improved scale and scope of large scale organizations. But in SMEs, they don't have those kind of uh, economies. Actually, your problem assignment is very, very general, okay? You need to rewrite your problem assignment and make it more specific and more in detail. And based on your problem assignment, uh, could you please tell me how did you define your objectives? My objectives, which were the problem statement that I... Yeah, that's why. When your problem assignment is not clear, definitely your objectives are not going to be accurate, okay? So you need to... Revise your problem assignment, objectives, and definitely your research question. And regarding your uh, method of analysis, could you explain actually what is the method of your analysis, how you are going to validate your work, how are you, how are you going to analyze your findings? Okay, explain for me how you are how are you going to analyze your data? I mean what is the methodology of analysis you have here? Okay, the total first of all, I will have to run a pilot test with 30 questionnaires to determine the validity of the questions. If at all is clear for the Reliability tests will also be conducted to test the validity of the questions. Correlation analysis and multiple regression analysis will be conducted as well. Have you, have you passed the research methodology class? Not yet? Not yet? So this is your first semester. Actually, you are not familiar with proper research methodology. That's why you need to attend the research methodology class. And from your thesis and your presentation, it's very obvious that you are not familiar how to conduct your research, OK? So this is just for your first semester. You still have time. Make sure you increase the knowledge of uh, how to conduct your research, understanding the basic and you need to revise your draft again, okay? So, so far it's okay, no problem, but you have to improve your draft, because, I mean, for your, uh, later you are going to, for your final waiver, if you want to present something like this, definitely examiner are going to fail you. So make sure you are going to revise all the comments, which we are going to give you later, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you.
Thank you. So with that, uh, Kalikim Day 2 has ended. So for tomorrow who wanted to join the workshop, please register your name with me. So thank you. Uh, the workshop that you need to register is the afternoon session, the one with uh, Dr. Shaheen. Okay.